All right, Jared, you have Does to look at this Does your dad tend product. to get cold? Oh, uh, uh, what? <laughs> look at this Father's Day present I found. Is that a, a beard catcher? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's does your beard. father have a beard? Yes, he does, but he's like he would never wear it. <laughs> All right, is everyone ready? Oh yeah. Sure. No. All right. I have to go. <laughs> so <laughs> you you have all just finished going through this little cave with your new buddy Adrian, and so after this you have acquired two magic quills, I believe Peter and I don't remember the other one's name. Uh, Jared uh, was going to right, name it. Right, uh, and I have not given them a name yet. So, are there any uh, name suggestions? Todd Howard. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, wait, so we're naming this other quill? Yes, uh, and, so we, and and his name is Todd Howard. So I I like it. So I take the uh, quill and paper from my satchel and I write down, "Your name is Todd Howard." Okay. <laughs> it just he puts a check mark next to it. <laughs> Alrighty, so you're all in. Uh, you're all walking with Adrian. He walks you up to the the gates of Bronzerfall, and so uh, you're you're in this really. It's like very snowy weather. There, you know, you're on top of the mountain. If you look around, you can just see like out for ages. You seem to be up on some kind of a peak, uh, and there's just this huge wall in front of you, and these gates, and there's two uh, two guards standing right outside. And so Adrian, he turns to all of you and says, well, thank you all for your help. Um, here's a little something for all of you. And he gives you uh, a little little bags of gold, each 10 gold pieces each. And he says, um, if you ever want to come and join our Adventurers Guild, we have several locations around Andafine, and uh, I put your, I'll put your recommendation. You'll be able to start. And then uh, he kind of gives you a little wave and heads back down the mountain. Cool. Oh. Goodbye. All right. So uh, now that we're here, what what do we do? Did, were we told what, what to do when we're here? DM, what did M tell us to do? M told you to go to the tavern called the Hammers Inn. Okay, let's go to oh, the Hammers so can, Inn. So we can just enter the city. Okay. Yeah, I'll give I, you guys little like mission briefing things every time <laughs> M gives you a mission. Cool. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. would let. So, I guess we just de walk into the city unless we want to freeze out here. I'm all for the right. city idea. Yeah. Good, because it's cool. Let's go to the city, yeah. I just you didn't know, You walk up like... to the gates, and there's these two very burly dwarf men standing oh. right in front of it, each with a big-ass axe, and they kind of put them together, blocking your path before you uh, get to the gate. And the one on the right says, I, what you doing here? Uh, is that our right or their right? You're right. Okay, thank you. Very important information. It, it does <laughs> affect my response. Yeah. Uh, we've been called here on business. What kind of business? Honestly, I have no fucking clue. <laughs> <laughs> the two dwarves look at each other, and uh, they kind of just exchange a glance, and then one shrugs and says, All right. I'll just need to set y'all. So, uh, you guys put off T pose so he can start searching. That's it. exactly what I did. <laughs> I, I A pose. All right. I Y pose. Caleb, okay, well, why'd you have to make that joke? I was going to make the joke. <laughs> so, the dwarf, the, the dwarf searches, you, searches you one by one and feels that you got weapons on you or whatnot. Um, and says, All right, now, well, don't make any trouble if you get in here, all right? Or what, you'll keep us here? Or you'll be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so they open the gates, and it's like these big-ass doors, like really tall, authentic tall doors, open up slowly, and you see uh, that it's not very much of a city. Um, at, like, maybe uh, a couple, maybe 100 yards down, uh, you notice another really big wall. Um, but in between there, you see a couple of buildings... And uh, some people, mostly just dwarfs, all bundled up in their coats or whatnot, carrying things around. Everyone looks really stone cold. Stone cold, Steve. Wow, Black it is city. not a happy place here. All right. All right. 
So, so as you enter in, you'll uh, you notice just some regular buildings or whatnot. Uh, to your right, you do notice um, this building with a huge insignia of a big hammer on it. And to your left, you notice what you can discern to be a temple of Hades. Hey, that looks like a temple Whoa. of Hades. <laughs> it has, like, the Hades insignia on it. Whoa, that's it, like It says hell. Temple of Hades on the front. <laughs> In, like, big, just neon, big neon, neon letters. Neon letters. <laughs> Open. <laughs> and there's, like, a little... Big neon temperature. letters. Hell. <laughs> so it's got, like, the, uh... Like, neon light of a leg going up and down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, cool. Uh, do we notice any kind of taverns around? You notice a big building with a hammer insignia on it. Hmm, that might be it. <laughs> hey, it's like it's like that one place. The uh, what was it? The Hammers Inn or something? That's so coincidental. <laughs> wow. Okay. We should probably I, try I, there. I probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we go over to the building. <laughs> with the big ol' hammer insignia on it. All right. As you open the door, it's a pretty small establishment <clears throat> on the first floor, but you notice a couple staircases kind of in whatever direction, just deeper into the building that lead up. Uh, and there's a bar over to your right where a big old dragonborn, he's bronze, and he just uh, he's there talking with some dwarves who are sitting at the bar. And around the bar, you notice uh, just a couple other dwarves and then some monster creatures. So you notice... Uh, Maybe one or two big bugbears, a couple orcs, and a bunch of goblins kind of just all playing some dice around a table. Okay. Don't cool. upset them. <laughs> so, at, at this bar, I can I roll perception to see if I can see either, like, M or anyone else who might be able to give us any information? Sure. Go ahead. Okay, I'm going to roll up. I'm going to do, do the perception thing. When I roll 1d20 plus 3. And you're not going to roll a 1. <laughs> All right. So you don't really notice anyone that you would recognize or anyone that looks like they need help. Or, yeah, like that they were going to be able to help you or whatnot. Uh, so, yeah, that's what you see around you. Well, well, I don't see them or anyone heading around. Suppose we should just sit down and wait. Let's just get a drink. They'll find us if they need us. I mean, like, how much longer do we got? We were supposed to be here within the month, but are they yeah, really going to be here? So it has been about uh, two weeks and three days. Look at all this time we got. We could relax. We could find something fun to do. Maybe. Yeah, let's go on an adventure or something. They said that uh, at that uh, the Adventurers Guild was, like, all around here, right? There are several throughout the nation. But so as you're all just uh, kind of moseying around... No, leave before he gives his plot. <laughs> 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 I mean, do you want to leave? <laughs> I don't you know. Leave the tavern. Oh, okay. <laughs> you, you leave the tavern and it's, it's really gosh darn cold out. <laughs> but we, wanna, we want to enjoy this city that you have for it's us. So as you, you, as you notice... City. As you notice, uh, like, as you leave the city, you can tell that, so these two walls, there's, like, the outer wall, which you already came in through, and then the inner wall, they kind of form a ring, so they're, like, two concentric circles, and it seems like, uh, right now, so you're in the outermost of that circle. Hmm, like Ba Sing Se. Yes, like Ba Sing Se. There is no war in Ba Sing Se. <laughs> it's true. All right. Let's go, let's go find yeah, some let's... extra stuff that Michael has put into his world. Exploration! Wait, are we actually leaving? I thought we were getting drinks. <laughs> I mean, we just got well, walked we were, in here. Michael was about to throw a plot our way. <laughs> it would be awfully considerate of us to get a drink or two. Yeah. It oh, also, like, like somebody mentioned, like, how early are we to the town? Oh, like, my uh, word. We're, we're just we under have... two weeks early. Yeah, we have under two weeks to get here, basically. So that's why I was saying we could explore and do a little side quest that I'm sure Michael has prepared for us. <laughs> Michael's, like, sweaty palms right now. <laughs> <laughs> I got tons of side quests. So good. He, I, I live with him. He want. tells me all the stuff that we ignore. <laughs> <laughs> so I, well, like, I, I started just like, I was like, oh, I can just reuse side quests they haven't done. So. Exactly. <laughs> nice. Yeah. 
Well, no, so, so yeah, let's go find one outside this tavern, tavern, and it's really cold. Oh. Um, well, it's really cold. I <laughs> take off all my clothes and go prone. <laughs> no, <laughs> just to stop. make it colder. Picker! <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> so, I like to call check. Shape the Temple of Hades. I mean, we've had great luck with temples before, especially the Apollo fellows. We'll see if they need any work there. Yeah, let's see what these guys... Wouldn't hurt. I stand Maybe up, I put all my clothes early. back. <laughs> okay. Thank it you, takes Baker. you about five minutes. <laughs> okay, let's go check out stuff. I refuse, <laughs> to, I refuse to discuss anything with Picker in public anymore. <laughs> I refuse to affiliate right. myself with him. As you walk up to the Temple of Hades, um, so it's this big old building made out of this blackish kind of wood, and uh, it looks very ominous. A lot of the windows you can't really see very much into them, uh, but the door seems to be wide open for you guys to go in. So I'm gonna assume you walk inside. I yep. walk inside. So you walk inside, and this place is like really kind of stoic. And uh, there's not a whole lot of personality. The walls are all just these uh, just black wood with nothing really hung up on them or whatnot. And you see a, a bunch of clerics just walking around in black robes. All right. Uh, do we notice hey, any, some like, uh, any like specific prominent looking clerics? Uh, yeah, so there's one cleric in the middle who's sitting by a small shrine of Hades. Uh, and he's just sitting down and he's reading a book. And you I can't go really right. discern much about him due to how dark it is in the building and his uh, black cloak and whatnot. So I walk right up to him, like I will follow. Oops. All right. Hello, need any work done? As you get up closer, <laughs> you realize that he's about eight feet tall, and he looks Hello. up and takes off his hood and reveals that he's a Goliath. And, uh, oh no! He he just looks at you cold, dead in the eyes, and says, "What you want?" Hello, <laughs> hello, am I back? Hi. <laughs> he says, "What do you want?" Uh, did what was the last thing that I said? Oh, you said hi. Do you have any uh, work done? And then he looked up at you and revealed he was a Goliath and said, "What do you want?" Oh <laughs> uh, wait, I, I I just just some work. I mean work. I guess uh, staying in town for a little while, we thought you might have uh, a, a quest for us. Come the bronze are for. <laughs> what for? No one comes here. Oh, uh, we're I mean, just here on holiday. <laughs> uh, we're on a bit of a quest of our own right now. A quest of self discovery. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, Goliath looks around at all of you and closes his book and gets up to reveal you know, his very tall eight-foot stature. Um, and uh, he just kind of looks around and only says, oh, you some adventurers, eh? Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, we don't normally have visitors here. We normally just tell you to piss off, but I think we actually do have a problem that we could use some help with. You see... And he kind of motions for you to follow him. And he leads you to the back of the building. Uh, to like a bookcase. And he pulls one of the books. And it like slides over. And there's a secret door behind it. Huh, secret door. And he says, you see. This temple serves as the Bronze of False Catacombs. We have many uh, prisoners in this city. And will they die a lot. <laughs> <laughs> We're having a bit of a... <clears throat> We're having a bit of a problem down there, though. We think a necromancer's at work. I mean, that makes a lot of sense yeah, on real estate. Lot of, yeah, yeah. Lots of dead bodies. We sit down there and we'll come back. You go down there and you figure out what's going on. We might be able to repay you. Might, might. More might. skilly things? I'm fine with that. Uh, so, hey... As far as repayment, say we do come back. Say we fix your necromancer sitch. Uh, we're, we're in town a little indefinitely. I'd give it a couple weeks. Um, so any any chance of room and lodging, I think that'd be 
room and lodging here at the Temple of Hades. Yeah, I suppose we could get you a bed or two. It won't be very comfortable, though. Nah, we're, we're used to I that. Mean, we just, we just <laughs> curl we're up used, in a corner, we apparently. We can get you a small corner, all four of you can share it. <laughs> Alright, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> now we're talking. <laughs> well, let's say, hey, let's, let's go on I might on prefer a bed for once. <clears throat> Alrighty, well, yeah, I'll just head down there and <clears throat> come back up when you're done with your business. I head down there. Yeah, I'll follow Caleb. We seem to be the two. We seem to be the two that can take a few hits, so I guess we'll go first. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> David, I think you met Jared. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> cool. So, uh, Boris and Picker, are you just gonna st hang out up top? <laughs> How, how I'm dark does it look down there? Huh? How dark is it? Do we have torches it's or pretty, anything? It's pretty dim. There's a torch, uh, like, so there's like a staircase that leads down, and there's a torch kind of right at the beginning of the staircase. Yeah, I'll take that torch if I can reach it. Okay. All right, so you guys are all in there, and then uh, you notice that the little bookcase starts sliding back, and you can hear this big Goliath saying to someone else, says, oh, well, they're never getting out of there now. You don't think this was some sort of trap, do you? I certainly hope not. <laughs> Alrighty, so... It may better be a trap. You're all standing in this hallway. I er, mean, excuse me, a staircase. And, uh... As you Roll get for down... initiative. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, we fight and, the stairs. And, um, as you, as you get down there, uh, so the staircase turns into a hallway that can either go straight, left, or right. Straight, left, or right? Straight, left, or right. You got three options. Straight, buddy. left, or right. Ooh, Are man, they all I'm just like guy. hallways or stairs? They're, they're all hallways. You can't really see <clears throat> very far down either of them. It's pretty dim still. Ooh, Michael, I'd like to use my detect... Uh, look, looking it up. The detect evil thing. I want to see exactly how it works. Yes, please tell me how it works. <laughs> as I can find the paladin in here. Found it. Okay, so it's within 60 feet. <clears throat> within 60 feet of you? Yeah, what so is, I'm going to stand... Just detect any, like, undead or whatnot? Until the end of your... You cut out. Hello? Hello? He's gone. Hello? Goodbye, David died. Milo Crouch. He, he died. <laughs> it's been nice knowing you. You can totally... Hi. Sorry. There. Yeah. What happened? Hey, he has a turn. <laughs> or uh, what's your what's your spell? Uh, it's not it's not a spell. It's... Oh, and there he goes again. Good grief! How's your internet today? I don't know. I guess it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> today. Hello. Okay. Long story short, sixty feet away, sixty foot radius. I can sense any undead within that radius. Tell me what. So I'm going to stand at the intersection of all three and use my divine sense to figure out which is the right way to go. All right. You can sense uh, the undead on both your right and your left. I'll let them know we're surrounded. <laughs> Not actually. There's some undead things that way and that way. Which way do you prefer? <laughs> well, we should probably try to avoid most of the undead if we can. I, I'm, I'm, I'm up for going straight. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> so... Uh, we go straight, I say. I think we should go straight. <laughs> I, I mean, that would make sense, as there are undead to the right and left. <laughs> yep. We um, go straight. Let's just hope they don't surround All us. All right, as you go straight, <laughs> there's a, a small door right in front of you, and it uh, has some words written on it that appear to be in um giant... Oh, really, oh my can, gosh, I speak that! Really, I, really I can also words. read that. Alrighty, so as you go up to the door, <laughs> uh, it says, the head will open me. Hey, does anyone know what I that says? Hey, with Boris, my... come over here. Hey, Boris, come over here. <laughs> uh, actually, head... Heckman, get over here. The what? head will open All right. me. Hold on, hold on. What, what's, what's up? What is I this just... really I big on the door with you. my he, head? Like, who speaks giant? Me. Other than me. I do. Cool, I so you and I know what's going on. I, hey, heck, well, can you come so, here for a second? So, so what, what does it say? It? <laughs> uh, it, 
I, I read it out loud, so like, because I was saying. Oh, okay. uh, no, yeah. we so here's what needs like, to happen. You guys need to pick me up, uh, and two of you should hold me by the feet, and the other one of you should hold me by the like chest area, and Heckman. then just like fucking use me as a battering ram with my head going first. Heckman, I'm so, three feet tall. Oh man, I'm not. Really? How am I gonna carry you? <laughs> I'm not so, up for uh, either of those. Okay, games. so while, while I was the other two it, of you. Uh, after uh, after I had read it out loud, what I was saying was I just kind of like lean against the door and put my head on it. See, that's I was gonna suggest that, but I was gonna suggest we use Heckman and have him headbutt it. <laughs> I disagree. Is, is Michael? I don't want to use my head. Well, we're right, waiting on like Michael to figure something out. So, um, <laughs> right, are you guys gonna decide to do something? Or? Yeah, did you, you guys use me as a battering ram? Okay, Do we want to use it really sound ground. like you had all agreed yet, so... <laughs> well, right, it wasn't so. an agreeing, I, I, I had just... Like, I, I kept trying to say what I was doing, and then everybody kept it. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, so... So, uh, Boris's head is against the door. And are we battering anyone's head into the door as well? Uh, Did first we want to see if Boris works. No. Alright, so Boris puts his head on the door and nothing happens. Okay, now we use battering ram strategies. <laughs> Oh, oh really? yes, that makes sense. So. All right. So, who's getting battered? Uh, Heckman, because he's got horns on his head. Hey, well, All right, so you... Heckman. Oh, can you guys... No. Uh, everyone who's carrying him, can you roll <laughs> athletics? Hey, athletics? have proficiency in that, guys. Uh... Oh, jeez. <laughs> Eleven. Eleven? All right, yeah. what about uh, Twenty-two. Else? Twenty-two. <laughs> And a 12 for Caden, or not Caden, Milo. Wrong half line. Yeah. All right, and a 12 for Milo. So, uh, Heckman gets, you know, the all, good old one, two, and then they, you all just bash his head into that door, and <coughs> nothing happens. And, uh, Heckman, can you please take 1d4 of bludgeoning damage? You know what? <laughs> I'd really like that. It sounds fair. <laughs> all right. I'm you not shocked at that. You, you all I'm not shocked that it didn't me. work. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, seeing that nothing has happened, we should probably turn around and look for something that will open this door. Is there like a pedestal or something to stick something in, like a keyhole? <laughs> Is there a bust of William Shakespeare with a button in the head? <laughs> So no, the bat cave. It's literally just a hallway with a door. Nothing else. Okay. What what was okay. the uh word? Uh the 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 head will on. open me. The okay, I guess we gotta go hunt me. down an item of some sort. We have to cut off the head of one of those undead we saw before. Perhaps, perhaps. Well and then not that it. we saw, we just that's what Milo said, at least. So maybe we should take a look around one of the other ways. Maybe I we should. Sounds quit. about right. Maybe we should quit while we're ahead. I don't get it. I'm go. I'm going to walk back down the hallway, <laughs> left or right, guys. <laughs> Your left oh. or my left? Wait, wait, wait! But now you're turned around. So are you facing the same way you were before, or are you facing the other? It way? doesn't matter. <laughs> we're. Uh, I'm facing. Okay. The opposite. So what was left is now my right. Okay. <laughs> okay. So which way are you guys gonna go? Left or right? Up. <laughs> Left. Okay, so we go the original right. <laughs> All right, so you go the original right, and so you enter this room, and David, your uh, your sense of death is already over. Probably would be over by now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you, you're in this this room that appears to be empty, and there's a bunch of um, so it, you know it's catacombs. So there's a bunch of like uh, kind of coffins in the walls and stuff, kind of just put in for maximum efficiency. Uh, and they just line the walls of this room, and then at the end, there's a big, uh, like, a <clears throat> suit of armor. Well, hmm. Coffins and a suit of armor. I don't like any of this. <laughs> you don't think those are all filled with zombies, do you? I don't know which ones. I can check again. <laughs> uh, right. is, is there anything, like, on the floor, like, trap-wise? Uh, um, we need perception checks for that. <laughs> Can I no, perceive you, you, any you traps any, or valuables? Can I see any traps on the ground? Can I, look my, I would like to use my divine sense again because it tells me their locations. <laughs> All right. 
Which of these this? things, which of these coffins have undead in them? <laughs> All right, so as you use divine sense, you notice several very small uh, senses of, like, the undead from each one of the coffins. Okay, every coffin has something. Yeah. They all have just uh, an undead, like, mouse in it. Picker, are you looking for, uh, valuables? I'm looking for shiny shit. All right, can you roll perception? Oh, 22. You notice that the, um, suit of armor is holding a spear, which looks quite valuable. Oh, no. Picker, Picker, please don't. Mm -hmm. So, we best not wake up any zombies, I suppose. But what's that suit of armor for? Does it have a head? <laughs> it does. It has a helmet. We might want to steal that. <laughs> is is there, like, another door at the under, other end, or is this just a... No, it's a dead end. Yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe we need to get the helmet, then. It's not a bad idea. Picker, you think you can go through quietly? <laughs> yeah. Okay, grab the helmet. <laughs> I'm gonna stealth my way over to the uh, to the thing, the suit of armor. Alrighty, roll uh for stealth. <laughs> Twenty four. Twenty four. Oh Don't right, you, you managed to get through really, really stealthily, and you're standing right in front of the suit of armor. Uh, it's right. about six feet tall, so you'd be able to reach pretty much any part of it that you'd like. I'm gonna try. <laughs> And grab the head. Is uh, that a sleight of hand or? Yeah, why don't you roll sleight of hand? You can't. Okay. You can't let the suit of armor know you're taking its head. <laughs> Twenty three. Well, I need to be like fast and quiet so I don't wake up any of the dead shit. Yeah. yeah that was a armor 23. makes a lot of noise. Twenty three. All right. So uh, as you take this helmet, um, you just kind of you pick it right up and you get it off of the suit of armor, but as you're doing it, you realize that it was kind of an integral piece of keeping the suit of armor together. <laughs> and the whole suit of armor, including the spear, just all clang down on the ground. And then from each coffin, two crawling hands appear out and jump into the room. And everyone should roll initiative now. Ah! <laughs> what if we just run? <laughs> <laughs> I oh, rolled it too. <laughs> so wh I while have no this, uh, modifier. <laughs> wh while the suit of armor is falling, I have really good reflexes. So can I just catch the spear? <laughs> sure, why not? Okay. <laughs> cool. All righty. So um, Ben, I believe you get to go first. So you're about twenty feet from the center of the room, so is the rest of the party, but in the opposite direction. And then, uh, about five feet from the center of the room, in like a, a, a different axis, uh, there's five crawling hands on each side. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's ten whole hands in here. All right. And Correct. they're kind of all just bunched up together, being a little bit of a... A little bit of a... A swarm? Yeah, it's a swarm of hands. It's a swarm of crawling hands, guys. So unfortunately, all I have is stabby damage, so I can't like swing in an arc and hit a bunch of them. Swing it. But I am gonna run into the middle of the room. Oh no! Uh, right in between right all of the hands. In between all the hands. Oh boy! And I'm gonna. Uh, so that's like what twenty five feet. No, she ran twenty feet. Okay. Um, and now all the hands are, like, directly around you. Okay. So I'm going to uh, use my rapier and try and attack one of them. I don't care which one. All right. Go for it, buddy. 16. All right. You hit it. Can you roll for damage? Yes. Uh, it's going to be 7 damage. All right, you get this hand right in the finger crotch, and it dies. <laughs> and now I'm gonna, I'm gonna disengage about ten feet towards the rest of the party. All yeah, right, move. Nice. All right, and then um, I believe it is Boris's turn. All right, cool, cool. Uh, I'm just gonna probably use Thornwit on one of these. Do it. Uh, let me make sure all of that. 
Oh uh, yeah, just a melee spell attack. So let me do do roll one d twenty. Make sure I have the right bonuses. I think it's plus five. I'm sorry, I just I just take so long doing anything. Casters be that way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's a shame we don't have any area of effect spells. Wait, Drew, you. you have something. Yeah, I, I do have area of effects. Yeah, uh, kill them all! <laughs> I don't think it will actually kill it because that's, like, entangle. I think it'll just, like, get them all. Do you have the thunderclap cantrip that does a five-foot radius around you? <laughs> I do not have that one. That would have been real nice. <laughs> it would have, but unfortunately... Oh, well. I no do worries. not have it. So I'm just going to use Thorn Whip. So let me roll here. Yeah, you're in probably it. Like, yeah. All right. So, what roll for damage? Uh, uh, 1d6. He rolled a crit. Yeah. Oh, sweet. So yeah. You can uh, Anything one... that has an attack roll can be crit. Yep. Yeah. So right. basically, 12 damage. <laughs> 12 damage. All right, so you're going to... Are you attacking on the right or the left? Uh, just like probably one on the right. I'm right. Now. All right. So as you you whip with these thorns, you actually hit two of them and kill them both. Oh, nice. Yeah. Look at you, all fancy with your max damage crit. And now, uh, Heckman, you can go in there for a little bit. All right. I see my boy Picker all stranded, all alone. <laughs> so I'm gonna rush to his side heroically. <laughs> And so I do have, like, for example, my Great Axe does slashing damage. Does that mean I can target multiple ones? Uh, you can try to, because they're all so close together. Well, that's exactly what I'll do, if they're within a five-foot radius, now that I've yes. moved. All right. So I'm going to just take a, a, a gander at a, a couple of them, or, or something. There's two on your right and five on your left. <laughs> okay. There's three dead ones on your right, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm going to go for the three dead ones. So, uh... No, um, <laughs> no I'm wow. going to... I'm just going to take a, 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 a broad swing at the five on my left and see All right, go happens. for it. <laughs> I got you get? a 13. 13? All right, so you actually only hit one of them. <laughs> And you just kind of nick it right at the top of the bone, and uh, you can roll for damage to see how much that did. With the d12 plus his strength, it's a, it'll kill. Seven. <laughs> Seven, yeah. So you knock off its kind of wrist thing, and blood spurts out of it as it crumples to the ground. You gross. <laughs> yeah, very gross. So now it's the hand's turn. <laughs> Have fun! <laughs> so uh, the t two hands on the right are going to go up to... Boris each, and they're gonna make some. They're gonna try to, you know, make some little attacky. Right so, uh, Boris, what's your AC? Uh, my AC is twelve. Twelve. All right. Yes. So this first one is gonna hit you. You have a higher AC when you're a wolf. For yeah. Uh, five damage actually. Five and damage. Second, yeah, and then the second one is gonna hit you for no damage because it missed. And then, uh, so the four remaining ones on the the left here, uh, two are gonna go to Heckman, and two are gonna go to Picker. And, um, one of each of them is just gonna kinda jump right up on your, uh, your shoulder, and the other two are gonna try to attack you. So Heckman, what's your AC? Thirteen. Alright, so that one misses, and Picker, what's your AC? Fourteen. Alright, so that one actually hits, and, uh, it does five damage. Five damage, damn. That's a and high five, five right there. That's a lot of damage. That's a lot good. of damage. Hey, cool. Is there anything near me? <laughs> uh, no, you're still just hanging out by the door. <laughs> are there... Where are, where are all the creatures? <laughs> so about ten feet in front of you are Jared... Or excuse me, Heckman and Picker. And they each have one hand on their shoulder and one hand in front of them. And I'm the gonna go for the hand in front of them. Front. All right, go for it, buddy. Because I'm... I assume I can only hit one. You can try to hit two if you have slashing damage. I have a longsword, so I will accept that. Alrighty, go for it, bud. Uh, 14? 14, alright, you hit both of them. Roll for damage twice. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, 
Okay, two, uh, five points of damage on one. <laughs> All right, he's dead. And thirteen and uh, eleven points of damage on the other one. <laughs> yeah, so that nice. one you actually chop it up into little pieces. <laughs> <laughs> you filet mignon this hand. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and now we're back to picker. I'm not right. wasting a spell slot on these guys. <laughs> I'm gonna. You have one on your shoulder. Yeah, I'm gonna pull out a dagger and try and stab it right off my shoulder. All right, because a rapier doesn't seem like the best option. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Roll for that. Uh, that's gonna be a twelve. Yeah, so uh, you hit it. You okay. Damage. Fuck, I missed. Uh, that's gonna be. I, I missed the die on my little table thing. Oh, okay. uh, all right, that's gonna be a six. Six? Yeah. So you managed to just like stab this hand right off of your shoulder, and it's still actually on your dagger. And it's oh shit! Can I take a bite? Yeah, go ahead. Why, right, why not? Gonna, <laughs> why? I'm gonna bite one of the figures. <laughs> why would you do this? The uh, the index finger. The next finger. All right, you bite it, and this really foul-tasting finger enters your mouth. <laughs> you, you know you can make him roll Constitution saving throws for this you kind can, of stupidity. You can choose to swallow that if you want, dude. Totally. All right, can you please roll a Constitution saving? Oh, there it is. So it's gonna be an eighteen. Eighteen. All right, you're good. <laughs> so I, I do. I do have a question that is relatively important. Um, yeah, what's up? What size is Picker right now? Oh, oh shit! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, he's small. He's five foot. Okay, so <laughs> no, he's ginormous still. <laughs> Thank you, oh, our medium. I, I legit forgot. No, because he had the the size potion. Yeah, I forgot that that wore off on your trip up. Oh, okay. okay. How long did it take for that to wear off? About an hour. Okay. Cool. <laughs> but yeah, Kenku are usually medium sized. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it was less about what size is Ben oh, normally as, as and just... if he was a monster or not still. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> I totally forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> alrighty, alrighty. So uh Boris, it's your turn. You have two right in front of you. Two right in front of me. I'm honestly just gonna do the same uh same whip thing again. Alright, do it. Roll for the AC. <laughs> yep. Roll one D twenty. Uh no. There we go. Boom. All right, 13. so you hit one of them. All right, so I'm going to roll 1d6. Six damage. Dang. All right, and you whip that boy, and he's so dead he can't even name it. And uh, <laughs> even... now it's now it's Heckman's turn. All right, so there's one on my shoulder. There's one on your shoulder, and there's one in front of Boris. Oh, man. Uh, I am going to take... My hand axe, and just kind of swat that thing off my shoulder. Do it. I will. Watch me. I'll get a twenty-three to hit. Yeah, you you hit it. Can you roll for damage? I will, and I'll get a four. You swat it, and it's stuck to your axe, but it's most definitely dead. Uh, can nice. I also take a bite out of it? I saw Picker yeah, do it earlier. It, I mean, <laughs> he didn't. Go ahead. I take Let's a. Do it. I take a, a a hesitant nibble. A hesitant nibble. Yeah, what, right. Like looking You're... picker in the eyes as I do it. Okay. <laughs> You're good. And so now it's the last hand's turn, and uh, he's actually just gonna scuttle on away. Oh, he Jesus. jumps into a crack in a wall. So it's like I don't he's that now that I just started it. bleeding out of my face. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's really interesting. The hand was just afraid that two of these people had just bitten them. <laughs> it's just like, nope, I'm done with these guys. Nope, out. <laughs> so uh, you're in this room now, and there's a, a broken uh, suit of armor just on the other side, and uh, Picker is holding a spear, and the the uh, the helmet is still on the ground over by that suit of armor. I assume it's fight. I assume it's not a halfling size full plate armor, is it? <laughs> no, it's like a. You know, your average medium sized humanoid. Gotcha. It don't fit me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Part so, there. what do I want to do? Well, we can check. I will check the helmet to be sure that this is or is not the head that we need. 
How are you going to do I'm, that? I'm, I'm sure. I'm going to just pick up the helmet and look inside and kind of see what it is. <laughs> it's a helmet. Wow. Well, we might as well take it. And I guess we yeah. can take the spear, too, now that we've... Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll say Picker gets the spear. Yeah, Picker probably grab the spear wherever he is. Yeah. Cool, cool. So, you guys get back to that crossroad, and you can go up towards the, the head door or down this hallway you have not gone. Well, let's try uh, the head door now that yeah, we got let's, let's the, try head. the head door. First. Let's give the head door a shot. <laughs> Alrighty. So, uh, you go up to the head door. What do you do? I put give it a head. I just the push door. the helmet into it. Work. <laughs> Nothing happens. Okay, the other way, guys. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, I take the helmet and start banging on the door. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happens. <laughs> Doesn't seem to work. I guess we'll go the other way. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Alrighty. You know, sometimes I question our uh, intelligence. <laughs> so you go down this other hallway, and you get to another door, and there's more stuff written in giant on it. Watch this one, Ted. Let me guess. Something about a spear? And so this one says the shaft will open me. Oh, we grabbed the wrong head. Uh, okay, I'm going to grab Picker's uh, shaft. <laughs> Well, we, we will use Picker to stab the door, or whatever. You're going to use Picker? No, yes. no, but Picker's holding the, we use, the we thing, use and I'm not just going to take an item from a character who's not present. But So you stabbed the door with the spear? Or we're going to use the spear on the door, however makes sense. <laughs> so you, well, you have to tell me how. <laughs> yeah. I will hold the spear up to the door. If that doesn't work, then I will stab the door with the spear. Like, what, are you, like, pressing it up against the door? Yes. <laughs> All right, so once the wooden handle part of the spear touches the door, it swings open. Mm -hmm. <sighs> See, I think it might be talking about just the spear, because the, the main staff of the spear opens this door. Maybe the head of the spear opens the other one. Let's go to, Let's go back. <laughs> All righty. You're back at the other door. We tap the tip of the spear. On the choice. door swings open. Hey, look at you, Boris. You figured it I out. <laughs> we solved the door puzzle. Now, now what's passage doors? That's the real question. Well, there are undead in that hallway, so I thought we just keep going. <laughs> All right. Boy. So as you go into this room, uh, it's much like that room with the crawling hands. There's a bunch of like little coffins in the walls and stuff like that. Um, but at the end of the room, you can see that there's a campfire that seems to have been lit, um, and then a small little passage uh, at the end of the room. You wouldn't even really call it a door. It's more like a hole, uh, but it should still be large enough for all of you to fit through. Hmm. So it's just at the end of the hall, there's a campfire lit, and then yeah. a hole in the wall. And it's still kind of smoldering, the campfire. Seems like oh, okay. it was recently being used. And then somebody left. Uh, can me, a uh, rather tall folk, fit through the yeah, hole? you can fit okay. through the hole. Well, this is right. They suspicious. Anyone can see down here. Hey, I bring the torch up. You can see in the dark, can't you? Oh, Ooh. yeah, I can, I, can, I can see so much in the dark. What's down the hole here? Ah, it looks like a bonfire. What what I I mean through oh, the hole? Oh, uh, okay. Uh, I perceive the hole. The hole leads into this tunnel that kind of twists and turns, so you can't really see where the tunnel leads to. It's a tunnel. Well, Not sure. Perhaps you might go first, simply because you can see best. Uh, well, during the this conversation, I got the uh, torch. During this whole conversation, I'm going to walk over to the bonfire. All right, and I'm gonna kind of roast that hand I still have on my dagger. <laughs> Take care. Uh, it's, it's and then I'm gonna then I'm gonna bite off the 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 ring finger. All right. Uh, Do you swallow? Yeah. Can you roll for Constitution? It's gonna be a twenty. Twenty. All right. You you go that sucker down. <laughs> How are you succeeding? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you know what? I'm just gonna flick the hand off my hand axe onto the ground. Alright, there you go. So why why are you eating that? Oh, it's tasty. 
friendly. It doesn't smell tasty. I assume that there's quite a rancid smell of burning rotten flesh. Yes, yeah, there's a look. very rancid smell. Can you please not take that been... into the tunnel with us? <laughs> then I lift up the hand and I show them all the maggots crawling on it. I'm like, that's, ah! that's the part that tastes good. Uh, <laughs> it's the chewy inside. <laughs> Oh, it's yeah. the creamy center. Uh, <laughs> I don't like this. Let's, uh, Does this qualify as cannibalism? <laughs> no, 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 thank you. Thank you. Yeah, but cannibalism is like a different. Se- cannibalism means differently in the world where there are multiple races of creatures. Ah, <laughs> uh, you're just right. So as you are all you just, go in the hole. Just, yeah, okay, you go in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's your? Do you have to walk single file? So what's your order? All right, I, I'll lead the way since I can see in the dark. Milo, can I get that torch from you? Sure. I grab. Why? I grab the. You torch. can see in the dark. Well, it's always better with light. <laughs> I agree. It's always easier to see in the dark when it's light. I'm gonna light. take a burning stick from the uh, bonfire and use that as a torch for the back, <laughs> so that we don't get surrounded. Alrighty. Well, you and I'll, I'll be this, in the back. You're gonna go through this cool little ditty tunnel thing. <laughs> I'll, I'll, so, I'll uh, follow behind Tech Man. <laughs> as you get in there, you see um, <coughs> there's a <coughs> buffing Tenku. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, so as you get in there, you see it's a ver- another room very similar. A lot of coffins on the walls or whatnot. Uh, but you see this kind of like ritualistic table, and there's a a, a guy kind of chopping away at a dead body um, and he's not facing you and he has not noticed you yet and then past him it, it seems that there leads another a door to a different I'm just gonna whisper to Picker you should stab his kneecaps <laughs> I might <laughs> don't test me I'm crazy I might just do it Picker you really should <laughs> okay uh, can I stealth over to him? Yeah, try your best, buddy. It's going to be a 15. 15, all right. So as you make it over to him, uh, you do happen to step on some rocks that weren't quite stable right as you're about two-thirds of the way to him. And he quickly turns around and shrieks, and you see that his face, he's just a, a, a little dragonborn kind of looking really squirrely or whatnot. And he actually jumps up over the table and runs into this other room, slamming the door behind him. Oh, you know, that probably wasn't even the bad guy. Great job, Picker. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Gosh, he was okay. not exactly Metal Gear Solid over here. <laughs> that, that's the main character from uh, Solid Snake, right? <sighs> Man, this, this poor <laughs> old soul. So there's this dead thing on the table. Okay, so, let's see what it let's see what it is. All right. What else so, is in the room? Uh, so coffins on all the walls, and uh, back you can't really see the back of the room quite yet. You need to get a little closer. Uh, but you do know that there's a door that he slammed behind him. Okay. Well, cool. I've got a, I've got my fiery st- stick torch thing, and I'm gonna ex- inspect the table. So you inspect the table, and you see. What appears to be a flesh golem that is in the making, uh, just kind of sprawled out along the table, and it looks really gross. There's some maggots crawling around in it. What uh, is oh, it? The body is just missing, and there's like dried blood all over it. Set it all on fire. Just burn. I'm sorry? Burn. Yeah, I'm gonna. St- I'm just gonna take my fiery stick and just kind of like stick it in his chest to set the- to try to burn this thing up. <laughs> all right, so it-, it starts to catch on fire, and as the fire spreads a little bit, you see it just kind of twitch or whatnot, but it doesn't seem to be sentient enough to scream in pain or anything. Uh, and so this thing just continues to burn. Okay, Can good. Can I take a look around the rest of the room? Yeah. What are you looking for? Uh... Everything but mostly valuables. All right, please. What do you think he's looking for? <laughs> it's bigger. I always want to ask. <laughs> uh, that is yeah. going to be a twenty-three. Twenty-three. So now as you're, you're looking high. around the room, you do notice uh, that in one of the coffins, they're all kind of open casket. Uh, you notice that one of these 
skeletons is holding on to this uh, chalice that looks kind of valuable. It seems to be made of gold and it has a few gems in it. <gasps> Can I get a holy grail of it? Hmm? The holy <laughs> grail is not gold. <laughs> no, you even thing. watch <laughs> Indiana Jones 3. <laughs> <laughs> it's the fake one. We're hoping he'll drink out of it and then die. <laughs> Can I go and grab then we it? get a new character. Yeah, you can grab it. Okay, I'm gonna grab it. All right. So as you pick it up, it's a little hard to get it out of his grip, but you kind of manage to break the, you know, his old fragile finger fingers, bones. and uh, you get this cup that comes out. And as you hold it upright, it, it fills itself with wine. Holy uh, shit! Oh. I'm gonna take her. Don't drink it. <laughs> can Can I? Uh, Kind of take a look at it and see if there's anything off about the wine. It just looks like wine. Take some sniffs. It or blood. smells like wine. <laughs> All <laughs> right, I'm gonna take a sip. You take a sip, and this scalding pain enters your mouth, as if you just took like a sip of boiling water. Uh, and you take one one damage. One damage. I worth told it. you. Is it worth it? What, what is that? Can I? Can I? Take a look at the the chalice and then make uh, an arcana check on it. Yeah, sure. Roll. I mean, cool. if Picker will let you. No. <laughs> no <he's welcome. laughs> you can look at no, it, but I you can't want, touch I want it. I my scalding wine. <laughs> I just want a look at it. Don't worry. I just want I'm to hold it up so he can take a look at it. <laughs> but he's not going to touch it. Are you going to roll arcana? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm I'm getting it here. Plus two. Yeah. What did you get? You got a 10. So, uh, as you look at it, you just notice that it, it seems to just be some kind of a, a ever-filling glass, but you don't notice anything else about it. Hmm. Well, I mean, we kind of got that. I mean, it's ever-filling, looks like, but other than that, I don't know what this is. It ain't part of it, though. All right. But I suppose at this point we'll have to see if we can find that guy. He certainly won't be causing any good things. Mostly bad, probably. He's right from the dead. Well, if he was trying to make that thing on the table, we should definitely not let him continue yep. doing such things. <laughs> I go look at the door. All right, so as you go back to the door, you notice that there's a big painting hung over it that seems to be using a lot of red as the main color. And uh, all over the walls next to it are these kind of like runic um, pictures. I look at the runic pictures. Alrighty, can you make a history check? Uh, I suppose I could. Roll 1d20. Let's see, history is plus 2. Yikes. Alrighty, um, well, so luck lucky for you. Uh, as you look at these runes, you notice that this is a, a retelling of a story that uh, you would you would know from your childhood or whatnot. And um, so as you look at the runes, it tells the story of this man who was a very famous painter uh, because he would use blood as his most uh, like used color of paint. He would use his own blood. Um, though tragically, one day when he was just a little obsessed with creating a masterpiece, uh, he bled to death because he was using too much of his own blood to paint with. Looks pretty oh, nice. It's pretty metal. <laughs> uh, the Halfling uh, Paladin many, is not pleased with any of this. How many uh, runic things are on here? Uh, you you glance at them all. Okay, well, I mean, like you said, that there was the main painting. I was wondering what, like, how many other of these. Oh, so you things. looked at the these runic things were around the painting, and they all told you the story of this. Oh, maybe okay. like four or five frames of them, yeah. Well, so what these runes talking about? That apparently, I painted this was obsessed with painting with his own blood. So I've got a theory. Let's see if we can try to open it just without, but. Maybe it's something that there has to be blood on the painting to open it up. Uh, they pick I try to open your... the door. Oh. Out of curiosity, that hand on my dagger, is that, like, still bleeding or no? It's very, like, goopy, dried-up blood. Okay. Coagulated. Yes, that's a good word. I'm going to bite off the thumb. 
All right, you bite off the thumb. And then I'm gonna swallow it. Swallow it. Ah! Can you roll a Constitution. Seventeen. Seventeen. You're fine. <laughs> You're getting really lucky. <laughs> uh, I, I I do try to like swing open the painting kind of thing. The the painting is above the door. Oh, it's above the door. Yes. Oh, I thought you were saying it was. Oh, I guess when you said over the door, I thought you. Were oh no, yeah, I meant it's above the door. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Can Can I open the door at all? I uh, so off. as you as you reach for the handle on the door, um, and you you touch it, you notice that now your hand is starting to hurt a little bit as you can feel some barbs kind of press into your skin. Oh, I I pull my hand back. And look all right, at the it. barbs the barbs kind of retract. Oh, right, that's. That's no way to open a door. Uh, hey, uh, Picker, can we see your uh, cup of wine? <laughs> yeah. Uh, what do you want to do with it? C can you pour some of it on the door handle? Maybe that'll work. Well, I, I pour some wine on the door handle. Cool. The door handle is now hot. <laughs> <laughs> and as you, uh, if you put the cup back up in an upright position, it will fill back up with wine. Okay, new plan. I'm gonna go back over to the uh, flesh golem body. How burnt is it? <laughs> He's uh, like his entire body is now on fire. Okay, how's uh, is there a hand that I could cut off and use? <laughs> how's how's the hand from Picker? <laughs> <laughs> so the the flesh golem's hands are really getting start to be burnt. Uh, so if you tried, you could probably cut it off real quick. Do you want to? I'm gonna do that quickly. Do you want to put it out with wine? <laughs> All right. So you you cut off the hand and it's still burning, and I assume that you want to like maybe pat it out or whatnot. Yeah, pretty much. Like, yeah. no All more, right. no more fire. So the skin is really charred. Um, I'm but... gonna quickly just bring it over and try to use that as the hand around the door handle for blood stuff. All right. It does not work. <sighs> oh well. Hmm. Well, perhaps I mean if. This painting's over the door, and he used blood on the painting. Maybe hey, we have Heckman. Blood on the painting. Heckman, I've got an idea. What's up, baby? So, how about you come over here? I'll take out my dagger, cut your hand a little bit, then you try <laughs> grabbing the door. Because oh. this guy seems to have a pretty, pretty massive hard on for blood. Hey, uh, that that actually so, gives me an even better idea. Uh, not doing that. Okay, while they are all discussing this, I will just grab the door handle and squeeze. <laughs> all right, as you squeeze, the barbs kind of push into your skin, and you notice that the door handle now becomes clear, and you see it starting to fill up with your blood. Oh. oh. Uh, and not so a fan, as, it, I... <laughs> as it gets to about a quarter full, you're going to need to take 1d4 of damage. Yikes. Okay, so it'll take three points of damage. All right, and so it's about a quarter full, and it, it, you can keep going if you want. I'll do one more. All right, as it gets to about halfway full, you need to take another D4 of damage. Okay, so I take a total of five points of damage. All right, All and right, then I'm, cool. I'm assuming you let go. Yeah, I'll let go after that. Okay, someone um, else's turn. <laughs> and then the, the door handle goes back to being opaque, and you can't see through it anymore. Someone else's turn. <laughs> And your hand is oh. bleeding, by the way. Can I, I get noticed. a heal up? Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to drink my health potion. I, no. I have healing if you need it. Oh, I, okay. Because I, I can I can take four hits from the door. Actually, actually Michael, I'm going to just... I'm going to uh, lay on hands to heal myself those five points, and then I'll go but back to... But your hand is bleeding. How do you do... <laughs> I have the other <laughs> hand. Sure. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> And I will, I will use five points of healing from that, and cool. I will go back to the door and try to finish it up. <laughs> all right. Oh, take, all right. Take two d four of damage. Okay, so another five points. All right. So the uh, the handle is all filled up now, and uh, the door swings open. Thank you very much for doing that, my love. I'll just, very I'll just use my la I'll just use the other lay on hand and finish and keep myself at full. <laughs> All right, there you go. Cool. So 
So the store is open in front of you. And you, you can smell the burning flesh of the flesh golem behind you. <laughs> we should, we should I leave. smell that, and it makes me a little hungry, so I bite off the pinky. Okay, okay, well, wait. Uh, Picker, we need to talk one second. You're holding the spear, the cup, and this hand. I think you need to drop something. Oh, so the cup was in my bag now. Oh, okay. Did you empty it? <laughs> yeah, when okay, I poured good. it on the handle. Oh, okay, okay. So it's in your bag, and it, you haven't refilled it yet. Good. Okay, okay. I just wanted to be, wanted to be sure. Cool. And so what were you, were you going to eat the, another finger off the hand? Yeah, so that burning flesh smell is really getting to me, and I'm going to take so, a, a bite out of the uh, pinky finger. All right, go for it, and please roll constitution. Oh, it's going to be a 20. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> uh, you <laughs> to regain one health point. Oh, <laughs> shit. What? <laughs> oh, my God. Wait, what? All right, go. <laughs> Wait, what happened? I gave him a health point. How many fingers are left on this hand? There's only the uh, There's finger. just the one. There's just the middle finger left. Wow, of course you leave that one. <laughs> Let's I go mean, through the door. I, I, I open the door to look what's inside. All right, so as you peer inside, you notice that the, the same guy that you saw earlier is hacking away at another body in there on another table. But there doesn't seem to be any walls at the end of this one, but there is a big chandelier hanging down from the ceiling. Ooh. Wait, there doesn't seem to be any walls? Excuse me, doors. Doors. Oh, okay. No, no just walls. Just o- open, it, open space into the void below. <laughs> uh, what, what is the chandelier attached to? It's like a big, heavy metal chain. Uh, where is it Which just is straight up in the, the ceiling? ceiling? Yeah. Was that guy from before in this room? Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. He's hacking at the table, the I assume, hacking away at another flush golem. Uh, has he noticed us yet? Uh, so yeah, actually, as you open the door, he looks at you and finishes hacking up on this body and runs behind it. And, uh, so this big zombie ogre gets up. And, uh, you should all roll initiative. Oh, yeah, here we go. Wait. Boy, I'm glad I healed myself to full before I did this. Where, where is, where is Heckman right now? He's in the other room, I guess? Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you were near me, I would have, like, saw the body, like, raising up. Can I take his torch and throw it at him? Go for it. Athletic check that, baby. <laughs> All right. Roll 1d20 plus 4. Hello? 7. Oh, yikes. All right, so you're going to you throw this torch, and it just goes off to the side. <laughs> you know, I plan that better in my head. <laughs> I thought that going better. <laughs> All right, my initiative is four. Oh, oh no! All righty. So, uh, Picker, why don't you make a decision? This ogre zombie is two, uh, twenty feet in front of you, and he's he's quite large, like ten feet tall. What about the dude oh. who made him? He's hiding behind in the back of the room, so I'd say maybe another uh, 10, 10 feet after him. All right, so he's about 30 feet away is what you're saying. Yes. That sounds right. I'm going to run over to the guy who made the, the golem ogre thing. All righty. And I'm going to stab him in the kneecap with my rapier. All right, please roll for that. Uh, it... At this point, I've kind of whipped the... the uh, hand off of my dagger and put cool. the dagger back in its like holster thing. Alrighty. Alright, that's going to be an 18 to hit. 18 to hit. Alright, so you hit this, uh, this guy in the robe. Can you roll for damage? Yeah. Uh, this is non-lethal damage because it's oh, in the right. kneecap. I guess that makes sense. Uh... Let's see. Wait, what's uh, gonna are we be... going to non-lethally handle this guy? That's going to be an 11. <laughs> All right, so uh, you hit him, 
And uh, he, as you stab him in the kneecap, he shrieks and says, "No, my kneecaps are my weakness!" and dies. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. So you, you hit him in the kneecaps, and he he re- like shrieks in pain and falls down on his back and just starts like holding his knee, and he's kind of like writhing on the floor. <sighs> what the heck did you do to him, my, uh, Michael? Is he am, am I allowed kneecap? to speak at this point? Yeah, you can. No, speak. you're mute. Okay. So I'm gonna intimidate him, and I'm gonna say, "Call off your dude," or the other kneecap goes too. Oh, all right. Why don't you roll for that? Uh, roll intimidation. For intimidation. That's gonna be an eighteen. Nice. So, uh, he he's quite scared of you or whatnot. Uh, but as you uh are looking at him. His uh, writhing pain kind of turns into this devilish grin as uh, two zombies just kind of drop from the chandelier uh, right what? on either side of that ogre, and so he doesn't he, he doesn't call off the ogre. Shit. Cool. Good and try, now Picker. I believe it is Milo's turn. Awesome! I see a big zombie ogre, and I know what to do with this thing. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> I'm gonna run up to it with my sword two-handed, and I'm gonna try to swing at it. <laughs> Cause I fought these. I fought ogres before. Zombies can't be that much harder. <laughs> All right. Can you roll? How's a uh, 16 to hit? Yeah, you hit him. Awesome. I'd damage? like to smite as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell me, tell me how much damage to do. Okay, so he will be taking 11 points of damage from the sword and then another 18 points of damage from the smite. Holy fucking shit. (laughs) (laughs) 29 points of damage. This ogre is just, he kind of gets stumbled back a little bit, but uh, then, you know, gets back up and he just roars really loudly. And uh, I basically run up with my sword and just kind of up his stomach. So now it's actually the ogre's turn. And, yeah, that was a grand uh, so <laughs> That's a lot of damage. He kind of picks up this big old morning star that he has. And bring it! Bring it right down on Milo's head. Uh, bring it! And what's your AC? 18? 16. No shield. All right. So he rolls this uh, He rolls this nice morning star. And uh, as he swings, he actually loses his balance and falls over to the side <laughs> onto one of the other zombies. <laughs> Not one! <laughs> All right, and then he, he takes the rest of his turn to stand back up, but that other zombie is not so lucky. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's, that, that's it for that zombie. All right, uh, Boris, it's your turn. All right, so I cast a Shalala and take out my staff. Do you now? <laughs> take out my staff. Yes, <laughs> yes, Jared, make the joke. <laughs> Ha-ha, Whip out funny. my shalon. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. But anyways, I'd like to smack this ogre. So I'm a, I'm a roll... That's 1d20 plus 5. All right, you hit him. Oh, I hit him. Cool. Well, for that's the... How much damage do you do? Zombies uh, don't have a lot of AC. 1d8 plus 2. Let's see. Roll. Boom. All righty. You hit him right on that kneecap, and he gets he goes, ow! <laughs> nice. <laughs> that's a lot. And, uh, heck, man, it's now your turn. Okie dokie. Well, I'm not feeling too good, Mr. Stark, so I'm gonna kind of play back a little bit and just shoot a crossbow bolt. Do I have a, a, a nice clear line of sight at that zombie? Yeah, you can see him. He's pretty tall, so you could, like, even shoot up. Oh, at the zombie. At the zombie. The zombie's a regular size. Yeah, you can see him. Nothing's... All right, I'm gonna bonk that zombie with my, my crossbow, and I'm gonna see what Do happens. It. That'll be a seven to hit. Uh, you do not hit him. It actually just whiffs right past him. Okay. Whiff. All right, you can you can uh, move around if you'd like. Uh, I I I hold it back, so I I kind of just stay towards the back of the party. All right, and so uh, now that that uh that dude in the robe is gonna go, and so he's actually gonna um run over to the side where there's a ladder and he climbs up 
jumps into one of those coffin things and knocks the ladder down. Wait, what dude in a row? The, the, the guy you stabbed in the knees. How is he climbing ladders <laughs> with a fucking bum knee? He still has a good knee. Because D, because you can't really do targeted damage in D and D, otherwise he's, it breaks everything. He still has everything. a good knee. <laughs> it, it's called called shots, and it's like sometimes it's like, yeah, I want to shoot him in the knee, so if he has trouble walking. It's like, okay, that's not so bad. Other times it's like, I want to call shot his neck so I can decapitate him. <laughs> Boom. So, yeah. so it's like it's not usually not usually. I would say like in those fair. scenarios, like. Like if I, if I was doing it's like hey if it was like a really good roll it does kind of happen mm -hmm, or yeah. like if there can you roll and you still do it but like well hey just, either way he still either has way, it. he's up there I guys. usually yeah. just add AC onto the cold shots and he used a lot of his upper body strength to climb that ladder so yeah no I, I I'm I'm not saying you're doing bad no. bad deal. Just, Oh, oh no! Right. no, you, yeah, no this is, you have every Michael right to make him move. If he's not, if he's not dead yet, he has every right to move. Because we can, in D and D world, turns. you can run at full speed until you're dead. <laughs> Picker. Okay. So, how much movement would it cost to follow him up the ladder? Uh, so it would take you about ten feet to get to the ladder, and then it would take some time to put the ladder back up. Yeah, he uh, kicked it up. He kicked it and down. And then it would take uh, probably the rest of your movement just to get up about half the ladder. Okay. Is he visible to me at this point? Yeah, you can see him, but it's he's like kind of obscured, like maybe quarter cover. All right. So if I tried to shoot him with my bow, yeah, would I be able to do five? that? Yeah, you can. But um, one second, you are going to have to. No, yeah, you just roll. Okay. Yeah, what does quarter cover do again? It adds Excuse to something. me, I meant half cover. Quarter cover doesn't exist. Yeah, <laughs> half cover adds something to AC, right? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Okay. So, what about the big guy? How far away is he from me? Ten feet. Alright, I'm gonna try and walk up to him. Am Would I in you front like to go around him? the table or jump on top of the table? You'd be behind him either way. If you jump uh, on top of the table, you'd be right of route where his butt is. Dude, I'm jumping up on that table. All right, so you jumped on the table. I'm going to use my rapier, and I'm going to try and stab him right in the butt. All right, yes. roll that hit. Oh, nat 20. Nice. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. can only good rolls. Please roll for damage. Uh, it's oh, same jeez. It's gonna be eleven damage per per the two. <laughs> Alrighty. So you, so you double eleven, right in, so it's twenty two? Yeah. Yeah, so you stab this guy right in the right in the A hole and he <laughs> shrieks again. And uh then you take your rapier out. And it's all gross now. Yeah. Which guy was this? This was the ogre. Oh okay, all you right. could, okay, so he stabbed the ogre. Is it dead yet? <laughs> no, it's good. I'm wow. now going to disengage and back up about 10 feet. All right, so you hopped off the table now. And yeah. uh, now I believe that it's Boris's turn. No, Milo? Yeah, it should be Milo the I'm ogre back. then. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm, is, so the ogre is still standing? Yeah, he's standing. I, I disapprove of that, so I'm going to hit him again. <laughs> Do it. Ah, so close to a 20. Uh... It's, I rolled a 17. Yeah, you hit him. Meaning it's a 22. Do I want to smite him? Smite. Yeah, let's just let's just smite him and hope that we can finish him off. <laughs> Do it. Okay, so we will be doing 8 points of slashing plus right. a total plus. of 25 points of damage. Nice. Alrighty, so That's you, the total. Smite, you smite this dude... Uh, you hit him right on, like, the belly button and whatnot, and he's, like, just so angry at everybody now. Um, but he still stands. Just so go down! You stupid gonna, thing! He's gonna take another swing at you with his morning star that he's gonna totally miss. Yeah! I'm invincible! And now, uh, actually... Don't get the, cocky, kid. The one zombie on his left 
is gonna kind of waltz over to Pickard and is gonna try to take a nice uh, a nice hit at him um, with a with a little bit of a club that he's got on him, and uh, he's gonna miss as well. So that's Dude. Cool. nice. Guys, we're invincible. They can't touch and us. So now it is Heckman's turn. All right. Sorry, guys. Let me try that one again. Uh, the the zombie's still up and living, so I'm gonna take another crossbow bolt at his noggin. Do it. Nice headshot. Ah, I'm gonna get a critical one actually. Oh, so uh, you, you know you get your crossbow out, but accidentally you were holding it backwards, hmm. so it shoots and just raises your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. I don't even know how that happened, but I love it. <laughs> it's been a while. Would you like to do anything else with your turn? Uh, I would like to quit while I'm ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All like right, and I'm back ahead. to uh, Boris, I believe. Oh, okay. Oh, Boris should have actually gone before Heckman, but, you know, whatever. It'll be fine. I understand. All, All right. right. So, I'm going to take another swing at this uh, zombie boy, or the yep. big ogre zombie. So. And is Shalila still active? Yes. This like, it, it lasts a good while. It's, how long does it last? Yeah, it, la it lasts a minute. All right, go. Yeah, all right. So, roll 1d20 plus 5. <laughs> 24. Oh, yeah. Sh you should him. definitely. Okay, cool. Uh, let's see, and then damage, roll, roll 1d8 plus 2. 5 damage. Alright, you hit me as a bad boy. In the other like, I why, are we, why are we so mean to their kneecaps? Uh, but he actually manages to stand back up, and he's not dead. Oh, dang nabbit. Alrighty, and now we're gonna swing our way back to Picker. I'm gonna jump back up on the table. Alrighty. Assuming he's still in range from the table. Yeah. And I'm gonna try and stab him in the butt again. Do it. Okay. 22. Alright, you hit him. Can you roll for damage? Cool. Uh, 9. Nine. Alrighty. So you hit him in the butt cheek this time, and uh, he he writhes in pain again. As you can see, kind of like his flesh deteriorating a little bit, kind of sliding off those bones. Uh, but he actually he manages to kind of stagger around and keep standing up. Oh boy, this this boy needs to get down. Right. Uh, do I still have time for an action? No, because he's fucking action. That's right. Yeah. I'm an idiot. Okay. All right, let's keep going then. It's your turn. Awesome. Is the ogre still up? Yeah, he's standing. Uh, then I hit the ogre. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> How's it? Uh, 11. <laughs> 11? Yeah, you hit him. How much damage? Uh, it's not nearly as impressive because I'm out of spell slots. <laughs> uh, another 11 points of damage. <laughs> not bad. Not bad. Just and, get uh, down. Yeah, so you hit him with that sword, and he falls to back over to the right uh, and dies. I got him! <laughs> nice! Alrighty, and so now uh, that zombie that's chasing Picker around is going to also jump back up on that table. He's going to hit you for um, four points of bludgeoning damage, Picker. Oh my. Yeah. And now it is... So what do the different turn. types of damage mean? So it's like sometimes you can just have a resistance to like bludgeoning or like a resistance to piercing. Like I believe gotcha. skeletons have a resistance to piercing because you know they're made of bone so it doesn't really yeah. make sense. Actually yeah. in 5e I don't think they do. <laughs> it's weird. Well yeah like so that's an example of like what could be you know. Oh yeah, yeah. In, old, in older editions uh, it was DR that doesn't exist in this one it's just resistance. Cool. So. Gotcha. Boris, there's one more zombie, and there's a guy hanging out in the coffin. Cool. Uh, so, I don't... Let's see. I'm trying to remember how... I think at this point, the shlils were off, but, like, it's a cantrip, so, like, I just use it again. And right. I'm just gonna swing at the zombie to end this real quick. 
All right. Hopefully, if I if can I you hit it, hit that boy. Uh, well, I can certainly try. Hey, yeah, you hit him. Can you roll for damage? Yes, sir. Oh, nine damage. All, All right. right, you hit him, uh, and he gets staggered a little bit, falls off the table, but it's back up, and he's uh, keeps kicking, and now it's heck. Yeah, roll. That's All right. Oh, I'm getting. Upsetty mama's spaghetti that I still have not hit anyone with this bow. I know what you're about to do. Don't. I'm gonna rage. <laughs> but more, you do this every single no, time. No, more importantly. Why didn't you do this while the while everybody was still here? More. Well, you guys killed them all. That's not my fault, huh? You could have just raged at the start of the battle. I was not upset at the start of the battle. <laughs> you want me to punch you in the butt from now on? All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. More, more importantly, <laughs> I'm going to activate Reckless Attack, which uh, gives me something, something, something yeah, advantage. I know what it does. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to yeah, shoot my crossbow again at this stupid Do it. zombie. Nice. I get a nat 20, but hold on, it's advantage, so right. I should roll again. <laughs> <laughs> I got a 17 <laughs> that time. Alright, yeah, you hit it. Can you roll for damage? I will. Uh, uh, I got a 2. <laughs> and that's, it would have been a 0 if it was not for rage. Nice. So, oh my uh, goodness. So yeah, you shoot it, it gets shot, and then it looks at you and kind of grunts. And now, it's Picker's turn. Wait, how how would it have been a zero? Uh, minus one dex. It's a minimum of one oh, damage. That's, uh, <laughs> that's nice. Yes, you can. It's nice. always a minimum of one. <laughs> Alrighty, so okay, uh, so I'm gonna sheath my rapier right and pull out that chalice. I'm gonna right. fill it up and I'm gonna try and splash the zombie with my chalice. All right, can you roll for hit? Uh, what what stat do I use for it? Uh, Dex. Okay. And can you roll with disadvantage? Yeah, sure. Yeah. It's gonna be a sixteen and a and a fifteen. All right. Yeah. So that works. And um, can you roll one d four of damage? One d four. Yeah. Plus Dex or no? No. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, be... but the burning pain of the wine <laughs> does not get influenced by how dexterously you throw it. It's gonna be a three. All right, cool. You throw this uh, this wine, scalding wine, at the uh, zombie, and it takes a little bit of damage. It kind of screams a little bit because it's real hot. <laughs> Just like that. Yeah, good job. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna put the chalice back in my backpack. Yeah, and I'm going to say that that's a bonus action, so I think you can still attack if you want to. Oh, shit. Okay, uh, so then I'm going to uh, rapier this boy. Do it. Okay. It's going to be a 22 to hit. All right, yeah, I think you hit it. Roll for damage. And nine damage. Nine damage. All righty. One second. Uh, yeah, so you, you rapier that boy, he gets stabbed and kind of falls to one knee, but manages to get back up. And now it is Milo's turn. Okay, what's still around me? So there's the zombie who is kind of staggering at this point, and then there's the robed man who's hiding up in a coffin. So he's up, uh, how high up there is he? He's like maybe 25 feet up. I'm, uh, what's his cover? Uh, half. Is there anywhere that I could go that would not put him in half cover? No. Okay, I will just pull out a javelin and try to throw it at him. Do it. Is this lethal? Uh, 19, 19 to hit. Yeah, you hit him. Is this lethal? Yes, I am not in the mood to leave him alive. <laughs> Alrighty. So, play the for damage. Uh, eight points of damage. Throw this javelin up at the guy and it kind of just right in his chest, and it actually causes him to roll out of the coffin and fall straight onto the ground in such a manner that the pole of the javelin gets struck by the ground so it pushes through his uh, through his chest and comes out <laughs> of his other shoulder um, 
And so he dies, and as he dies, uh, you notice this kind of, like, just energy field kind of blasts from him, and the zombie in the room just falls right over. Hey, look, guys, I solved all the problems. <laughs> cool. You solved his zombie puzzle. <laughs> puzzle. <laughs> all righty. And uh, at this point, you all remember that um, Screech, the Kenku woman who gave you the potion of purification ingredients, did mention, uh, zombie hearts. Did mention that you need ten zombie hearts. Ah, I vote that we How pick up a few of these. The zombies five each. each. They have one, then. <laughs> <laughs> I vote that we at least take two of these hearts. <laughs> yes. Why don't we take all three? That's a good question. How many do we need? Oh, wait, like ten? oh right, yeah, because a zombie ogre. Uh huh. Does zombie so ogre count for two hearts? No, it's just one. It's a really big one. Okay, heart. worth a shot. We we definitely probably should have taken the heart from the previous room instead of burning it right away. I was well, just that like, was well, a that wasn't a zombie. Not a zombie. Uh, there actually was no heart in there. Oh, okay. So do you take Well, I'm not touching it. Yeah, stupid Caleb. Didn't you know he was a tin man? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. So you have now collected three zombie hearts. Cool. And uh, there's this dead necromancer just on the floor. Uh, let's let's check him for stuff just to make sure he has. I'd like my javelin back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so you get your javelin, and Jared, you can get your uh, your little thingies too. Yeah, your crossbow you. bolts. Yeah, no problem. But I'd like to check to see if there's anything like important on him. Yeah. So as you rifle through his things, you just find about five gold pieces. Um. Uh, some, like, what do you call Twill? Tweed? Tweed. You find a roll of tweed. A, ro a roll of what? thneed. <laughs> a little roll of tweed. A roll of, a roll of tweed. tweed. And, okay. uh, and uh, a, small, a small knife with some initials carved into it. What are the initials? Uh, yeah, they're right. in Draconic, so none of you can recognize them. Okay, we could probably take it back to the... Uh... Someone will understand. Yeah, someone will. Alrighty. Can I take a look around the room for valuable? Yeah, sure. So, uh... Go ahead. Okay. It's gonna be a 22. Alright, you don't notice any valuables, except you do notice that the chandelier above you has been encrusted with some gems. Can I take an arrow and try and shoot the chain? Oh, That's hell just yeah. Gonna first, all of first off, is anyone... Underneath, you are. <laughs> <laughs> you are. So, like, can I move out of the way of it yes. and try and shoot? An, how am I going to shoot an arrow directly up to the chain? Okay, so you move out. You're going to try to shoot an iron chain with an arrow. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay. How's eighteen to hit? Sure. Yeah, you hit it. Okay. Okay, but since the chain is made of iron, nothing happens. Yeah. See, I was thinking, oh, chandelier, <laughs> drop it down, and then I was like, that's a metal chain. It doesn't work. Yeah. It's about <laughs> 20 feet above you. Okay. Goodbye, arrow. <laughs> <laughs> you can collect your arrow. It fell back on the ground. <laughs> okay. Cool. Well, uh, now that that's all done, uh, I suppose we should bring this one back. Although... Wait. Wait, there's a ladder on the ground. Wait, is what? there a ladder tall enough to reach no. the chandelier? Ladder is about twenty five feet. <sighs> okay, so I'm gonna try and like lean the ladder up against the chandelier, see how sturdy it is. Yeah, so it's a little hard because you know the chandelier is just being suspended from a chain. So <laughs> like as you would get higher up on the ladder, the chandelier is gonna move a little bit. Um, but you could definitely try to climb up there. I'm gonna give it I'm, my best. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna help by like uh, hold it, holding the ladder, and I kind of like motion over to Heckman to help. I help. All right. Good. I'm hold gonna give it my all. You can uh, walk up. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna go up there and see how many gems I can get before I fall. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so as you're up there, uh, you notice that these gems are kind of encrusted in, but you can kind of poke them out with your dagger. Uh, right. So while you're up, you find about four uh, gems, each looking like they're worth maybe 15 gold pieces I give, each, I give the ladder a playful shake. 
<laughs> uh, Picker kind of wobbles a little bit, and he's not very happy with you, I would assume. I don't know if he is. I don't know, are you I'm happy not with him? him? I don't know, I, I'm pretty amused by it. I do it harder. <laughs> I fall. <laughs> right, pick a fall. And, uh, you fell onto the table, so it's only about a 15 foot drop, so I think you're fine. Jeez. I get up oh. laughing, and then I punch Heckman in the right oh. arm playfully. All right. Oh, right no, there. I take 20 <laughs> points of damage. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, now now that we're done with all whatever that was, uh, I suppose we should probably take this, take all, I don't, I don't know, should we take the body back? Yeah, proof of we'll purchase. Just leave it to them to get. <laughs> yeah, we'll we we'll just take the head. back. Yeah. Let's not leave any more blood just trailing all behind to clean up. Uh, Why are we creating there jobs? Is, <laughs> there is the other way that we didn't go before. Uh, there might be some zombie in, hearts in there. <laughs> yeah, there might be some zombie hearts in there that you can see. Alright, sure. Yeah. You know, if we, wanted, if we wanted to... If Milo wasn't a good character, we could have kept him alive and then just forced him to make ten zombies and then kill him. Yeah. <laughs> Which would have been good. But... I hate, sorry, Milo has slight morals. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. So you guys want to go back to that other room, or...? Yeah. yeah. Alright, so um, as you get back into that other room, you see um, a bunch of dead zombies on the ground. <laughs> How many? That's cool. How um, many? How many, indeed. I think there's about four dead zombies on the ground. Cool. Let's get the hearts. As I take a perception roll to see what's around the room. Uh, so in this room, there are, again, some coffin. Uh, I'm not going to make you roll perception. Okay. Uh, there are, again, some coffins just kind of like all over the walls, just as normal. Um, at the end of the room, there's another shrine of Hades, uh, and it shows him, and he's holding a lantern in one hand and a spear in the other. Oh, oh, I, I get it. Oh wait, no, he's already holding the spear. Yeah, I, I had the same thoughts, but I'm like, wait, no, he's already there. <laughs> <laughs> I guess this is just the spear of Hades. Can I try and take the spear? <sighs> uh, so if you go over to the spear that Hades is holding. Um, and you, what, you're just going to grab it and try to take it from him? Yeah. So as you pull on the spear, it actually kind of clicks in a place, and then the statue kind of moves to the side, and a staircase is revealed. Uh, oh, what shit. have you done now? Oh, you found a secret doorway. The staircase goes up, by the way. <laughs> secret I don't, door. I'm always one to follow the cool secret doors. Did, did, did you guys get the zombie it? hearts yet? Yes. Let's assume that we did. So, so we, we now have, have seven. seven. Who's holding on to these? Because I, <laughs> I <laughs> always have them in the uh, let, Let's just assume that I have them. Sounds the good to me. The heart it isn't really that much bigger. It just looks like a fat person's heart. <laughs> what, what are you trying to get there? Oh, are you saying that... <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Picker is facing all right, out of all right. reality. So, what do you guys want to do? Uh, I go up the ladder, the uh, stairway, the staircase. Yeah, let's, this, let's look the up the stairs. The secret door. Alright. So, as you walk up the stairs, it's taken a little bit of time to get up there, and you're not noticing it get any. Uh, like, you're not noticing a door up at the top or anything, you don't notice any light or whatnot. And you just keep walking up these stairs, and you keep walking up these stairs, and you keep walking up these stairs. This is a lot of stairs. I mean, I'm okay with this. It's calmer than zombies. <laughs> Besides, oh, more stairs right. means cooler things, right? Can I look, look back the way we, we've... Yeah, so as you look back, you see the door you came into only about ten feet away from you. Well, it's 
It's a magic staircase. Oh, wait. I, I got an idea. And I he head back down the stairs. All right. You're, you're now back in that room. And then I grab. I try to grab the lantern from the statue. The lantern comes right off. Cool. I head back through the stairs. As you go up the stairs, you notice that there was nothing really in the lantern to begin with. But as you go up, this green fire kind of starts to illuminate. And uh, there's all this writing along the walls, and it's all in giant. What's it all say? I say out loud as I read it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so <laughs> you said two things at the same time. <laughs> all right. So it, uh, it, the, the, it seems to just be the same phrase written again and again and again and again and again. Okay. And, uh, what it says is that the fire will open the stairs. The, fi the fire will open the what? The stairs. Stairs. Oh, yeah. well, I got the fire. And here. we got the stairs here. Perfect. Oh, oh, I nice. think it's pretty sure. obvious what we need to do. <laughs> I walk up the stairs. <laughs> All right, and you keep walking. I hold on, hold on. <laughs> and so, so no, no, and I look back to like, are we still oh, not going anywhere? You're still about Wait, ten feet away. Fellas. What about that uh, fire that was in that one room that one time? Well, I mean, we have green fire here. Well, night. yeah, but there's red fire back there. Throw. <laughs> what, Ben? What? <laughs> you are breaking up there, my guy. What is <laughs> Oh my ben, maybe try typing out what you're like trying ground to and like <laughs> <laughs> the stairs. <laughs> oh, shit. He's gone. There he is. Hello? <laughs> oh, no, I can't hear anything. Ben, try typing. Ben. No, Ben. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> I'm glad we can hear his keyboard and in, in <laughs> Picker starts typing. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? I think there's a reason your voice wasn't going through. It's because you got it. Including the stairs would be on fire. Oh, there we go. We can Dumb hear you. Idea. How about now, uh, can, can I feel heat on the 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 green flame? Uh, so you can open up the little lantern there and try to put your hand near it and you don't feel any heat. In fact, Ooh, it feels oh. a little cold. Keep I, it I open. Put my, I, I put my hand in the fire. Your hand is now in the fire. Oh, it's <laughs> magic fire. I, I, I shake the lantern onto the stairs. Alright, some some fire pops out <laughs> onto the stairs. <laughs> I'm gonna you pour my fire. as you were going up, but it, there seems to be some oil that runs along the stairs, and it all catches on fire. Oh. It's oh. green fire, and it goes up, and then a door opens up at the top of the, the stairs. Oh, I found the door. I found it. You found <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure. I, I don't care who door. found it. I'm going through it, and I charge in front of everyone all right. else. <laughs> so Heckman exits down. this door to find themselves to find yourself a. In what appears to be the Temple of Hades again, as you can tell from all of this black wood that's everywhere. Uh, but you seem to be in like a, a little bit of an annexed room from where you were originally. Is there anything in this room? There oh, are no. some clerics of Hades walking around in their black uh, um, robes, and this seems to be where they eat. So there's lots of tables or whatnot, and they're eating. Food. Oh, nice. uh, don't worry, are 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 we interrupting something? And so they all kind of look at you and look back at each other. And then that one Goliath that you saw earlier uh, stands up and puts his foot down and says, Oh, you came back up, eh? Yes, yeah, we did survive. Like the we, we, what was this secret passage all about? Is this just a secret room to your lunch break room? He says, Oh, there's lots of those passages leading around the catacombs. Here, give me that lantern back. I suppose. He takes the lantern and he says, Did that necromancer give you much trouble, eh? Not too much. I mean, well, there was some zombies. He, had a, but he did have a big ass fucking zombie. Yeah, that was and good. I think we're in tight station. Did you find any of my cleric friends down there? 
Uh, well, I don't know if they were zombies. The well, I suppose that would make some sense. Uh, well, I, I, follow me, and I'll get you compensated or whatnot. And so, as you're going, he notices that Picker is holding a spear, and uh, looks at that and says, uh, "Boy, that's the spear of Hades you got there." Oh, there, there was another so one. So it would that. seem. Where did you find that? I found it down in the catacombs. Well, I knew that, but where did you find it? Well, one of the zombies was a. Uh, I, I can only assume it came from one of the statues, but I figured I'd return it for a small fee. Well, <laughs> here, I'll, I'll tell you, I can either give you, I'll give you lodging either way, and I can either give you uh, some gold compensation, or I'll let you keep the spear of Hades. Well, what's the, uh, what's the spear do? So that spear there will inflict whoever is being attacked by it with some necrotic damage. Ooh, it's a necromancer spear. So it does it anyone necrotic? One like spear. You know, I am good with the gold. I'll say that. Does anyone like spears? I mean, oh, I'm, I'm, pretty good I'm with happy. With with I wouldn't the mind having a spear to chuck around like... at people instead of javelins, but I don't really care. <laughs> Make sure oh, nobody else wants the spear. I can give you give me the spear back and I'll give you some gold. Okay, we'll take the gold. Yeah, All right. I think the gold is probably the better so option he here. Takes the spear and leads you back to like the treasury room where he gives you each about ten pieces of gold. And uh, he also takes something from under a desk and says and yeah, the have, spear. Ha, yeah, I hear he took the spear, boy. Took it by force. So, uh, and then he hands you a small pendant and says, This is the pendant of Hades. It will give you resistance to any necrotic damage you come across. Oh, it that's a token, a token as our gratitude. Please, I've already got a minute. Minute. someone else take this one. Lodge in any of our rooms we got here. I suppose. I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wear. This pendant of Hades. Cool. Well, all right. Can you How many of these yeah, artifacts you got that are of Hades? I mean, you got the Spear of Hades, you got the pendant. Well, of we're Hades. the Temple of Hades, you see, so. Right. We have lots of things for Hades. Yeah, it just doesn't seem very creative. I'm sorry that you want us to have a pendant of Aphrodite. <laughs> You well, have a uh, bed of Hades that I can... Ben, you're just dying. <laughs> do, you have, do you have a bed? Yes, we have lots of beds. <laughs> you're free to use the bed. <laughs> oh, we, we have beds of Hades. No, don't be silly. Yeah, we don't have any bed of Hades. <laughs> The bed of Hades is just a grave. <laughs> All right, we'll take it. <laughs> All right, well you can go and sleep somewhere if you like. We do not have There's a general store down the street here, <laughs> but we don't have one ourselves. Oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> Goodbye now. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, what time of day is it? It's like getting to the evening time. Alright, would, would stores still be op open if Picker wanted to go purchase or sell some things? You can sure as hell go see. Alright. Let's, let's explore, people. Let's go find, uh, yeah, you said it's just down the street, yeah? Yeah, yeah just down the street, take a left. Alright, we do that. We go down the street and take a left. And immediately you are met with the general <laughs> store of Bronzer Ball. Uh, oh wow, everything is so the, close. The doors are locked. I knock. 
I knock on the door. We knock at the same time. There it is. sounds like one knock. <laughs> okay. Oh, Michael, sorry I forgot about this while I was kind of laughing at Picker, Picker dying. How much gold did we get? You got ten each. <laughs> <laughs> Am I still dying? Yeah, yeah very just, much so. Yeah. yeah. All right, all right. So uh, as you guys knock on the door, you see a dwarf kind of just glare at you from the inside window, and he goes back, and the door stays closed. I don't think I don't think they're willing to talk to yeah, us they today. Might not be open. <laughs> well, yeah, but do they have hours like... posted on the door? <laughs> There's nothing oh. posted on the door, but the doors are locked. There we well, go. We can right. hear you now. Oh, the general shit. store was closed. Okay. Let's check the specific store. <laughs> I look around for a specific <laughs> store. Is there a specific store around? <laughs> so as Is you there... look around, you don't really notice anything else very special. You can continue to walk around the whole circle of the city if you'd like. Yeah, let, let's take a nightly stroll. All right. City. So as you go, you realize that you're all very cold because it is very cold. <laughs> um, Let's yeah, go. We should buy some clothes that actually keep us warm. Oh, I know how to keep us warm. I take out the golden chalice. <laughs> <laughs> no, no picker. <laughs> all right. So as you walk around, you're not really getting anywhere. Just more houses or whatnot. But as you kind of get to where you would assume is kind of like a diameter across from where you were originally, like just right on the other end of the city, uh, you a see another another wall comes in. So like now that that lane you're kind of in is really skinny because another wall is building a circle around the, the inside of the city. And right at its base is this big uh, building that seems to be where maybe some nobility stays. Oh. Oh, uh, so we're in the fancy oh, part of town now, guys. Nobody typically has some stuff to steal. All right. Mm -hmm. Turn picker up. I can barely hear. So, uh, as you're all walking around, it's starting to get a little dark. And okay. um, as you're in this high end of town, as it would seem, uh, two, two dwarfs kind of mosey on up around you, and one of them says, Hey, now what you doing here? Oh, we're we're Walking just taking around. a stroll. It's our, our our first time coming here to the city. We thought we'd take a look around. We're the walking. Other one says, "Uh, oh well, what a night to take a stroll, eh?" And they both start laughing a little bit as uh, some four other dwarves kind of come out of the alleys or whatnot and kind of surround you guys. Yeah, I'm just gonna pull out the sword now <laughs> and try to make a little intimidation check. All right, roll. I don't think I don't think you dwarves understand what it is you're getting into right now. <laughs> All right, roll. Oh. Uh, let me check what my intimidate bonus is. Uh, nineteen. Nineteen. All right. I uh, may be small, but I'm scary. <laughs> this horse, you look right in the face, just looks right back at you and says, "Oh, now I eat halflings like you for breakfast, eh?" And they all oh, oh. kind of step a little closer. And uh, they all are kind of ripping their axes and clubs or whatnot. And uh, one of them says, Now, all right, we know you've got money, or else you wouldn't be coming up here from nowhere. Just give it to us now, and we can make this all go easy. So are, are they all surrounding us? Yeah, they're like in a circle around you. How far are they away from us? Like maybe 10 feet less than that, probably. <laughs> I'm okay. gonna take out. Uh, I'm, the, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'll let Picker do his thing. I'm gonna take out the portrait of a goblin that I found <laughs> in that one dungeon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I'm gonna throw it at the biggest one. <laughs> All right, you throw this tiny piece of paper towards. That just kind of flutters in the wind. And it just flutters around in the wind and gets lost in the snow. Oh, oh no! So. Yeah, Here's I bet you're question. sorry you messed with us, huh? <laughs> what, what? Where? Is there any dwarves directly behind us from the way we came? Uh, yeah, they're in a circle. Okay, There's well, one. I'm I'm going to walk up to the one that I was talking to, pull out a gold coin, and just <clears throat> here, take it, flick it at him, and then try to swing it with my sword. This will be non-lethal. <laughs> All right, can you roll for the hit? Uh, 
24. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you managed to kind of nick all the hairs off his beard. You cut off like a good portion of his beard with that. Oh, and, uh, that's an insult. He grips his hammer and he says, All right, boys, we've got some trouble tonight. And so, Wait, I don't, get, I don't get to roll for damage? <laughs> you nicked his beard. But I rolled a 24. It was, <laughs> <Yeah>, was non lethal. <laughs> My, non lethal means you still do damage. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, he nicked his beard. <laughs> then, uh, uh, so they're all going to simultaneously raise their. Um, their hammers and clubs and stuff like that. But then, over uh, from behind this house, you hear um, some very heavy footsteps and uh, a voice. It says, All right, now, no trouble here. <laughs> and so, out from the shadows walks this great big bugbear wearing a very thick thir- fur coat and uh, a robe like around it that goes down to about his feet and you can see that he's wearing some like some uh, nice old boots or whatnot and he's got a bit of a helmet on and he comes out with a morning star and uh, looks at the dwarves and says uh, no trouble here tonight alright now get out and all the dwarves kind of just uh, look at him and they they say, oh, we were just welcoming these few travelers, uh, and they all just well, actu- kind of actually run they, away. They were threatening us. <laughs> quite quite <laughs> aggressively. <laughs> so uh, they all kind of run away, and that bugbear roars at them as they run away. And they're all scared of him or whatnot. And then you're just standing there, and the bugbear is there, and he says, oh, now what are you doing here? You don't look from around these parts. <clears throat> That's because we're not. We were we're visitors of the city, and we're simply exploring what the city has to offer. When we ran into these fellows, I will pick up my coin again. <laughs> All right, you pick up the coin, and you can pick up the dwarf hair if you want it. Nah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All righty. Um, and so this Hi. bugbear says, well, "My name's Mog, and uh, I work here for the city squad. I protect you." can get you back somewhere safe. It's not very safe to be around these parts at night. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting that. Oh, wait. Picker, Picker is typing. Picker is typing. Picker wants to say something. I think we can hear you, Picker. Picker. No, I know. What is it, boy? I'm, I'm just what is making it? a meme. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I thought it was going to be like one of those lassie moments of like, there's a boy stuck in the well. What are you trying to tell us? <laughs> so, um, uh, the bugbear motions for you to follow him and he goes back towards the inn that you uh, went into at the beginning. Dude, and you guys can choose to follow him or not. Well, I, I mean, the inn is nice, but I, I do know we have lodging our, at the Temple of Hades we can do. I mean, that's right across the street from the inn, so might as well follow him anyways. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I pro- I, we probably say that on the way, hey. Like we're, yeah, like it's the safe place that we came here to. <laughs> so uh, as you're all walking back, he kind of notices that you guys aren't really bundled up in this cold all. weather. So he he goes over to Milo, who's small, so you know he wants to. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Sorry, I'm still in the process of memeing. <laughs> all right. So, <laughs> what? So, uh, is- I don't really get it. But okay. So um, Mark kind of just looks at Milo and says, "Oh, you're not." really bundled up here and kind of just grabs his shoulders and looks behind him and as he's doing that he notices the mark on Milo's on the back of Milo's neck and just kind of freezes for a little bit and uh, then he says oh you were sent here by him were ya oh you know that guy don't you (laughs) (laughs) to answer your question Uh, yes we were sent here by M. (laughs) I don't know what has been trying to do. Hold wait, on. You wait. Okay, so you, you don't, don't belong here. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, I'm sorry, Heckman. What did you say to Mark? To Mark. Marga. There's yes. We know this person. Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> oh, hi, Mark. So he says, "Uh, oh well, you know him. 
You were supposed to be seeing me. Y'all are here a little oh. bit earlier than I thought you'd be here, but I think we can we can still work something out, eh? Oh, I suppose. He really didn't mention you at all. Well, I'm here with orders to meet a group of little <laughs> rag... <laughs> That's so fluid. <laughs> <laughs> I've been given orders by him to to meet you and give you your next mission, I What say you meet me at the Hammers Inn tomorrow morning and we can go over it? All right, that sure, sounds that like a plan. All so, righty. You would so have, you, are, are just a quick question. You don't happen to have the same mark as us, or are you, are you working with him? Mark kind of gets down on his knee moves his coat to show you that he too has a mark on the back of his neck. I see. How'd they get you? I don't want to talk about it. That's fair. I Did, did you wake up in a world. dark room tied to a chair? <laughs> yes, that was part of it. <laughs> yep. That's what happened just, to us. Just know that we're all in this together. Apparently. All right. Well, if you... I'll meet you at the Hammers Inn in the morning. Y'all better get some lodging or whatnot. Where are we? We, 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 we got and a nice little of, corner. Right as he says that, you kind of arrive right back at the beginning of town where the inn and the uh, the temple are. Okay, cool. We, I suppose I'll, I'll say, wait, you don't want oh my to. <sighs> <laughs> we, I, I suppose we'll go in. You don't want to. Mark. You went into where? We'll go uh, into the, the temple, temple and then Hades. after we say goodbye to him and then basically rest for the night. All right, Mark kind of waves off as he continues patrolling around the city. And uh, you guys go into the temple. Cool. Okay, let's go uh, find our rooms. Uh, <laughs> or, you know, the nearest corner, our, whichever is first. Our room that we were given us and then uh, bundle up in the corner. I'm sleeping on the bed. Screw you guys. All right, as you go in, uh, another cleric kind of sees that you're looking for refuge, so kind of points in the direction over to where, like, all the rooms are or whatnot, and uh, there's a nice empty one that you find. And it has, cool. about, it has a, a, a bunk bed and another bed. I uh, so. toss my bag onto the bottom of the bunk bed, the bottom bed of the bunk bed. All right. Cool. I get on the bottom bunk. <laughs> All right. I uh, I also uh, get in the bottom. <laughs> no, wait, no, wait a minute. I hop in the bottom bunk wherever I can fit. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna find whichever part of the. I'm gonna find a bed that does not have somebody in it and sleep in that one. All right. So you climb up onto the top bunk. And are y'all so gonna really? take a long rest here? Please. I mean, I, oh, really so. <laughs> I have long rest, all of us. Down all right, so. so many hit points. You guys all long rest. All right, so, so you yeah, all yeah. wake up in this temple. <laughs> and, uh, Milo is well rested, and the other three of you are a little, a little sore. No, we are we are well rested. Okay? All right, We're all right. better rested. If you believe yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, I did more rested than Milo. I got a, I got a bed for an eight foot Goliath to myself as a three foot halfling. I slept <laughs> like a baby. <laughs> Waking up every hour. So you all okay, I slept I slept like a very tired college student. <laughs> there we go. Waking up every two hours with depression. Hello? No. <laughs> <laughs> Found it. Oh, okay, wait. The final one? You don't yeah. want to. Wait. You don't want to, do you? <laughs> that is. Is, is, is that it? the whole thing. All right, I'm banning Ben. What was, what was this? <laughs> what was this in relation to? <laughs> uh, the whole part where we were just like, you don't want to fuck with us. All right. <laughs> ben, that was like two sessions ago. <laughs> 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 all right, so you're all awake, and you're all sitting in these beds. Okay. Uh, 
let's, uh, I suppose we'll, uh, go head over to Tavern to hopefully meet Marg. All right. <laughs> so, uh, you go to the tavern, I guess, and as you walk in, it's, uh, outside, it's, it's not snowing anymore, but it's still pretty cold. There's overcast skies. You go into the tavern, and, uh, you can see that same dragonborn behind the bar and a couple dwarfs sitting around it, and you see Mark kind of sitting in a booth that is definitely not big enough for him uh, in the back. Oh, hi, cool. Mark. Oh, hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. <laughs> uh, I like how we came into this tavern, like, we recognized the dragonborn, but we literally just popped in for like 30 seconds and walked right back <laughs> out. Uh, but I well, because I'll, he was about I'll, to throw a plot at us. Can we go to the general store before... Do this. Actually, yes, I would like to buy some clothes that fit in the that work in the winter. All right, so you okay. you probably leave the, the, the <laughs> and you waltz over to the general store. Doors are wide open. Okay. All right, we go in. Hello, Mister General Store. <laughs> There's a dwarf who looks up and goes, "Oh, come in here. How you doing? I'm oh, doing just fine. Well. Thank you, you for doing? asking." Are you going to buy something? I've got something that you could use, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, I, I so sure I'm looking to both buy and sell today. I, I would like a that. winter cloak. <laughs> All right, I'm I like... can only take so many orders at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone talk! <laughs> so why don't we do the selling first, and then we can do the buying right. after. So for selling, first off, I've got a fiddle and some sheet music. Well, I, I don't have much use for that. I could give you maybe five gold pieces. I mean, that's good for me. I don't have any use for it either. All right. <laughs> hey, what about he your takes... picture of the goblin? He takes the I fiddle. Threw that away, remember? Were we not able to find that, Michael? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's gone forever. Like it's what a very done. small, like, inch-by-inch inch picture. <laughs> 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 All right, so he, he says, okay, and he gives you the five gold pieces for the fiddle okay. and the sheet music. I've also got here four gems that I personally believe are worth at least 20 gold pieces each. He looks at the gems and says, Oh, I could give you 20 for the lot. Use me. I could give you 20 for the lot. I mean, yeah, insight check? Fine. To make can sure I, that you've given us a good deal? Yeah, do an insight. Alright. Wait, which one of us is doing it? Uh, anyone who wants to, usually. 13 for David. Okay. 13? Alright, you can tell that he's kind of haggling you. <laughs> uh, picker, <laughs> may I? <laughs> yeah, sure. Michael, how much did you say these things were actually worth? They're actually, actually worth 15 each. But I and said he's giving us 20, 20 for all of them. Yeah, no. <laughs> I would like... I would like 10 gold pieces for each. <laughs> Well, all right, all right. I could give you forty there. I must have made a mathematical error. Twenty, right. uh, twenty on the persuasion, by the way. <laughs> all righty, forty gold pieces for the law. Cool. That sounds good to me. All right. He takes them all. And gives You're welcome, picker. Forty gold pieces. <laughs> cool. And now, I would like to sell. Yeah, so, so I, I want, also. Uh, I I, oh, I have sorry, one you're, thing. You're still going. I do still have this golden chalice here that fills itself with wine. Well, that's You're pretty cool. selling that? Could you yeah. maybe show me it fills itself up with wine? <laughs> I, I, pull, yeah. I take it, and I take a whole gulp of it, and I, I just kind of, like, go through the pain to try and, like, force them... You roll or try and, like, Yeah. <laughs> Seventeen. Yeah, okay, so you're not going to be visibly having any pain, but you are going to take 1d4 of damage, which okay. I will roll. Uh, you're going to take 3 points of damage. Okay, I'm going to... This is me trying to deceive him that it's a pretty good cup. Yeah, he goes... And then, I'm assuming and the then, cup fills itself yeah, back up. Cup, yeah, He goes, oh, all right, you sure you want to sell me that? Seems pretty yeah. interesting. Why would you be that's free wine for the rest of your life? Why do you want to sell it to me? Well, I'm I'm more interested in gold than wine at the current moment. Well, all right, let me see it now. So he takes it and he says, "Are you sure it's safe to drink?" Eh? 
Uh, well, I mean, I'm going to pretend so. I found I'm not it in a part a of Picker's group. Well, well I found right, it I'll in a crypt, so... Um, take a swig might... of this, then. I might as well. See oh, how no. it goes. <laughs> so he takes a, a nice swig of this wine and immediately oh. spits it out. Because, you know, it's fucking boiling. <laughs> 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 oh, now what kind of a trick are you trying to play against me? And kind of I, throws the cup back at you. I don't know what you're talking about, man. It, it tastes fine to me. Well, oh, you know what? You can get right out of my store. Yeah, your friends are good to stay, but I want you to leave. <laughs> I'm just going to go up to the guy who's like, Can I please get something for the cold weather outside? Yes, That's all my I want. friend. I can give you a nice big <laughs> cup. Oh, you're quite small, aren't you? I'll take anything. <laughs> I can give you a child's coat here. That's good enough for me, how much? <laughs> well, it's a child's, so it's quite cheap. It would only be about uh, one gold piece. I hand him a gold piece. Thank you. <laughs> there you go, mate. Either so, you two need anything. So I, I, I walk up, uh, seeing all this trading going on, and it's like, well, I have some things that I don't need. So, uh, I place both the roll of tweed on the counter and the uh, dwarf hair from last night, which I picked up. Oh, you picked that up? <laughs> now is yeah. this more funny business with you? Uh, I, I, I just want to see how much I can get for this loot here. I hear this is what adventuring's all about. While this is going on, can I try and sneak behind the counter? Yes, yeah, sure, go ahead. All right. I'm gonna I'm, I want in on this perception check. <laughs> I'm going to try and stealth around the counter. All right, go ahead. That's going to be a uh, 19. Okay, I don't see. You have managed to make it behind the counter without him noticing. All right. Can I take a look around and see what he's got behind the counter? Behind the counter are some daggers and knives, a shield, and... Uh, Maybe some arrows. There's also a door that leads into the back of the store. I'm gonna try and stealth my way through the door if it's on roll again. It's gonna be an 18. All right, you uh, oh, can feel around, and the door seems to be locked. Okay. So you're right, like just a little bit of waves behind him. So uh, you better hope he is still entertained by Boris's tweet. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna try and sleight of hand some of those arrows and then try and sneak out around the Roll counter. Roll for it, baby. The sleight of hand check is a 22. All right, you, you pick up a, a nice wad of arrows. How, how many? Eh, like ten. A, about a wad's yeah. worth. <laughs> Two a wad's worth. <laughs> and then to stealth back around the counter is also 22. All right, you made it oh around. God. Okay. Uh, but this time, you know, he sees you come out. Well, he didn't know you were behind the thing. He says, "All right, now what I tell you? Get out of my store." All right, I, I go out the door. All righty. And All then right. he looks at Boris and says, "I can't give you anything for these." Why not? Yeah, well, they're, they're quite frankly, it's garbage. <laughs> <laughs> he picks up the beard hair and says, "I already have plenty of this." <laughs> I, I, I look very defeated <laughs> alright and then he looks at Heckman and says and you the red fella would you like anything uh yes yeah, some damn respect <laughs> <laughs> well I'm sorry I did not mean no offense ah sorry I get heated sometimes that's, du that's a double negative that means he oh. that means he meant offense a little okay. enraged if you will <laughs> <laughs> would you like anything uh, yeah, do you have uh, a peach? No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sir. It looks like you can't help me here. All right, yeah, then. Well, if you're all good, then. Well, I, I wasn't quite done. I, I, I would like to uh, get one of them nice coats. All right, a coat for as big as you is going to be about three gold pieces. Three gold? Well, I did make some last night. Uh, yeah, it's I'd like to get a coat. Uh, I'd yeah, also yeah. like to get one about the size of that uh, red bird. Uh, oh, sorry, I can't say that. That's that's rude. Uh, uh, for the Kenku friend of mine. That's going to be another two gold pieces. All right. I I suppose that'll be good. 
I'll hand him uh, five. Cool. He uh, goes into the back and gets uh, two coats, throws them on the table, and takes your coat. Cool. Uh, yes, thank you very much, sir. <laughs> no problem. And I, I, I head out of the store. All right. Now we can, now we can go meet with uh, the bugbear. All right. So is, is Heckman the only one without any cold resistance? Well, I mean, I'm kind of like hellish, right? I should be yeah. perfectly fine fighting off All the right. cold. <laughs> and you go outside, and everyone's wearing I mean, their coats, except Heckman, and his nipples are very hard. I don't have a coat. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I step outside, and here, here you go. Uh, since you got kicked out, I thought I'd get you a coat for you. Oh, thanks. Real quick, would you say my nipples are erect? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I look very closely at them. Can I inspect <laughs> his nipples? Okay, so you walk to the tavern. <laughs> no, come on. Wait, no, I'm rolling d20 for, for investigation plus two. I, I rolled a... Uh, nipples! What is there to I, inspect? I, <laughs> I rolled a two for inspection. You did not find anything interesting about his nipples. You didn't find any of the nipples. So you walk back to the tavern. <laughs> and as you enter, you see the dwarves at the bar, the dragonborn behind the bar, and the bugbear at the end of the booth. We go wait, over to Mark. Wait, can we go back to the, uh, the general store, see if we can find a blacksmith? Oh my god. <laughs> no. We're going to Mark. <laughs> okay, that was a joke. <laughs> all right, so you all sit down with Mark, and he sees that you're all wearing coats now, except Heckman. He goes, "Oh, I see you all a little more bundled up now, eh? You have the night treats you." Good. I don't like to freeze outside, though. That's pretty good, good but I'd like to get out of you. this town as as soon as possible. Well, I think you're in luck then. You got a mission, eh? So uh, he kind of looks mission around. Mission A. Sure. What about Mission B? He kind of looks around a little bit to make sure no one's uh, listening or whatnot, mm -hmm. and uh, he picks up this like piece of parchment with a. It seems to be a wanted poster, and uh, on it is this uh, face of a Goliath, and it says "Wanted," and then underneath it says "Wrath," dead or alive. Uh, and he says, "This here is our our target for your mission." You see, I'm sure you know by now that Bronzer Falls the prison city. And he waits for a response. I, I assume escaped prisoners. So the guy's name is Wrath? Yes, so this here is just Wrath. And, so uh, where's, he, where, where, where's so, his six friends? So uh, in the center of the city. He doesn't understand your six friends joke. Okay. In the center of the city. We've got a prison here called, uh, excuse me, the Mountain Cell. But, uh, that's for just general prison people. Or whatnot, general prisoners. Not too heavy of any crimes or whatnot. Um, but, uh, up towards the north of the city, right, right where we met last night, actually, uh, is a. A little more high security prison. This one's called the ISIS Keep. ISIS. <laughs> ISIS Keep. ISIS. <laughs> uh, wait, what? That, and that right there. <laughs> the ISIS Keep. ISIS. It's for ISIS. ISIS. Prison is against <laughs> the Emperor's throne. There. Yeah. The so, Emperor's robe. The Emperor's throne, prison is against new the throne. <laughs> only the, the, most, the only most ruthless criminals go here. All right. So, uh, Wrath here is the brother of the head of Andafine's army down in a uh, Poliopolis or Keppel. But uh, Wrath here, he's been sentenced to life in this prison. Uh, as he has committed crimes against the throne of treason and betrayal. It's your job to get him out. Oh, so we, oh, we have to get him out. Right? Yeah, that's what M wants. 
so that's what we'll give him. Now, we have two ways that we could go about doing this. Oh, you know what? I think we got about three ways we could do this. So, I have a friend named Cave, another bugbear like me. He's a god inside Isis P or Isis, uh, Isis, I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> In the ISIS cell or something. The ISIS keep. That's what it is. I'm sorry, I forgot it. ISIS. <laughs> okay. One second. Ben was DMing me something secret, so I had to respond to that. So, we can either get you in from a secret entrance, and he can give you disguises, and you can be pretending to be guards. We can also throw you in the prison and see if you can escape from the inside. And lastly, we can try to burrow through right into Ref cell. Hmm. So How long do, you... do we have to make a plan? Well, M didn't want you here for another two weeks or whatnot. So I would assume you're good until then. But I wouldn't risk these things on our necks going off. So I think the sooner the better. Will yours also go off in, you know, if this job doesn't go off? I sure hope not. Well, I guess we'll try to do our best. Well, so which of the three sounds good to you? Well, I'm not particularly stealthy, so whatever requires the least of me sneaking around is probably best. Yeah, if we can just burrow in there, you know, in, out, and done, we'll just do all the... the... the brute work with uh, no distractions. Yeah, bur like burrowing in seems to be like the one that I don't know, seems simple I suppose. Yeah, it's the most sneaky of the options. Alright. Burrowing is what you want. Burrowing is what we can do. I, I I mean, it's less burying and more unburying, I, I would think. Burrowing. Oh, bur I, oh, I couldn't tell. Sorry. Bad ears. You have a very thick accent, my friend. Well, so, there's an exit on this side of the city. Excuse me, on the other side of the city, near where we met. Where we can leave, and it will be a bit of a trek around the mountain's edge to get to this wall where we'll need to burrow in. I have a map here that my friend Cave gave me, and it will show us exactly where we need to burrow. Oh, right. Hey, Marg? Yeah? Uh, so I pull out two papers that I still have in my backpack from our first encounter with those nobles. Yeah. And I say, hey, do these uh, like insignias and stuff mean anything to you? He looks at them and says, no, I've never seen anything like that. Alright, cool. So I throw them on the ground and I, I pour the boiling wine on top of them. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's that for? And then I light them on fire. <laughs> what? So, Mark... In the middle just... of the tavern. In the middle of the tavern. Mark just kind of starts tapping it out with his hands. Now what? You do that for? Uh, that'd be cool. <laughs> oh, in the world... Why can't M ever send me someone who's smart? Oh. I apologize for my teammates. My well, partners. That's, that gets an interesting question. How long have you been in here for? Oh, I've been under this case for about two years now. What about yourselves? Oh, only for about a couple of weeks. We're pretty new. Oh my. Do you know how to get rid of it? <laughs> You think if I knew how to get rid of it, I would just sit on my ass for two years? I mean, you like know taken. some people. <laughs> There's a whole lot of us, you know. I've seen several of them die to the curse. Comforting. Well, um, let's hope I... that's not us, eh? He kind of lifts well, his drink, takes the drink and knocks on the table. I mean, you don't suppose want to kind of get free, we might be able to help. Oh, and how is that? No. 
Hmm. I like lower my voice because I don't want like people to to hear. We might have a way to break the curse. It's impossible. A witch? No, I don't know. We've been told there might be a way. We're trying oh. to get the things that could get us out. Sorry, had a bit of a stroke there. <laughs> well, what on <laughs> earth could you be looking for to get us out of this curse? Oh, what do you say? What could you even be looking for to help us? There might be a special potion. We have, we have a list of things, don't we? Oh, well, let me see it. Yeah, so here it is. It's uh, a spectator's tongue, whatever the fuck that means. Uh, five werewolf claws, ten zombie hearts. We already have seven of those. Uh, a pound of blood rot. We have a little bit of... And the horns blood of root. Ristro. Blood root, whatever, fuck. He looks at this list that you have out on the table. Or maybe he just listens to you. He says... But you know what? I think I know where you can get your hands on one of these. Which one? My friend Kay from the prison, he tells me eh, they have a spectator somewhere in there <clears throat> used to torture the criminals. Oh, so we might be able to get in there and get us a spectator's eye. Uh, it says you need a tongue. I don't know why you want the eye. <laughs> I mean... Oh. Because each of the, technically each of the eye stocks does cool magic stuff, so... <laughs> I, I guess we might as well get the whole thing on. <laughs> Just drop I'll the whole thing into the potion, what could go wrong? <laughs> oh, yeah, right, then. Well, why don't you meet me tonight, and we'll uh, break right around where we met. Maybe not tonight, just in a few hours, that you collect your supplies or anything. And then I uh, will work our way, and I'll point you out in the direction for where you need to burrow. I'll bring all the tools with me. Uh, I can't be burrowing with you. Someone will raise suspicion for me missing my guard post. Oh, of course. And once you get inside, Cave might be able to help you. But hopefully, his calculations should be correct, and you should just get right into Wrath's cell. Well, that's good. I mean, considering if anything goes wrong and we get in the prison, well, then we'll just have to go with that plan instead. All right. Well, I'll meet you then in, say, two hours. He swigs his beer, gets up, and leaves. Cool. Cool. Well, he's on his way out. Uh, can I take a look at him, see if he's got anything cool on him? Yeah, sure. You can roll perception. Alright. All right. One moment, let me find my D20 again. Which one is it? It's that one. Fuck. Shit. Ass. Piss. There we go. That one. <laughs> As you look at him, you see that he is a bugbear. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't notice that before. <laughs> He's not even wearing any clothes, as far as I can tell. <laughs> you discover you have x-ray vision. <laughs> Alrighty. Cool. I feel like that's that's a good spot, probably. Yeah, maybe. What do you yeah, guys think? That yeah. seems pretty good. I don't we know how much mission. you get in five minutes. Yeah. All yeah. right, and this is the part where I tell you that that quest was one hundred percent improvised because I didn't think you were gonna want to do a side quest. <laughs> <laughs> I was wholeheartedly expected for you guys to just do the prison break today. <laughs> huh? Yes, but see, the thing is, I know that you've had side quests, and you keep telling me it's like, Hello. yeah, I'll just move one over, and I'm like, okay, let's see if that works today. <laughs> well, so I was gonna have this side quest that you could activate if you did something on your way to first peak. Yeah, you but think you we're clever? So then I never wrote the side quest. <sighs> but then I had to make it up on the spot. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs>